will call the meeting to order. Welcome. Well, we got all kinds of people today. We must be doing something exciting. Um, are there any changes in the agenda? I have three things that came in sort of on the late side. Yep. Uh, the high school is having some kind of fireworks display, which normally Kim and the fire chief would process. Yep. But this one is a commercial display. Oh, great. On <laughs> the 21st at night. So it's Saturday night. This, uh, this Saturday night. Kim okay. also had a <clears throat> clarification on a policy. Yeah, you can, Susan can hold this. Uh, on the homestead declaration policy, which needs to be updated. Just a really quick thing. Okay. And uh, road closure for home day. So those three things. Okay. Talk about whenever it makes sense. Okay. Well, we have we have the people end. that. Yeah. There we go. Ed made it. Mm -hmm. Um. Why don't we do things that we have people have come specially for? Yep. So then you're welcome to stay for the whole meeting if you want to, but <laughs> you're also welcome to leave if you want to. <laughs> so uh, let's start with the home day road closing, closed locations and parking from noon to three. We all have our map, right? Why don't you go ahead and tell us and introduce yourself, please, and we'll. like to request that we have some road closures um, for some safety issues. Um, in the past, we've had not anything happen, but we'd like to be proactive and have the, a good portion of Main Street closed. Um, we've got things going on on both sides of the street and have, um, you know, we got little kids running both sides and right. parents right. watching them, and we just like to be able to close them down from, basically from the parade until three. And uh, Ron has done a nice little map here with the public parking and what part. We'd like to close the road. Be, I guess we're closing it from at the Johnson Street extension, and that's west of Main Street yeah. here. Um, we're close it at the post office um, so right. they can come down and then um, just pass the Eden Street so that they we, we can detour people to the Eden Street so they can get down to Katie's Falls if they right. wish to. Okay, um, so they can make that loop. Yeah, we're not going to close Eden Street so that they can, so we can detour them. Down, the, down Depot Street. Down Depot Street yeah. and down from there. Um, and I mean, we'll request, you know, local traffic only or whatever, and then detour signs to make people right. aware that they right. okay. should be. <coughs> and we're hoping to put the home day signs right there beside of them so they understand what's going on, that we're just stuck and have the road closed for no reason at all. <laughs> I think Mark French is aware and we still need to figure out signage but the right. idea is that we have Main Street closed for those three hours and then we'll figure out how to help people get around it yeah you need a motion for that or just no. um fine, I it's, fine with me. yeah yeah fine I don't mean I don't well why don't we go ahead and then it'll be know, yeah it'll be official you can go ahead and do that and uh, we'll figure it out on the details okay okay I'll make a motion for Day to shut down um, Eden Street, I guess, it's down through the um, Main Street down through. That's Depot to West Main. West Main? Depot Street, yeah. We're not going to close Eden, but yeah. Depot Street. Depot Street, okay. Second. Oh. Okay, here comes a third. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any more questions or discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, anybody abstaining? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds like it's going to be another 80 degrees <laughs> September day, right? No rain. Yeah, definitely no rain. Okay. Let me see. Hey there. Do we have a p other folks that want to bring something up? Comments from the public? You're here for a specific issue? 
All the agenda. Okie dokie. Um, Fast Squad. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? Oh, good. All I need is one more thing to break at my house and I'll be ready for the third mortgage on it. <laughs> Jeez. <clears throat> All right. So, back in May, May 16th, I had sent Allie an email asking her what I had left for the budget for the fast forward. And uh, she sent me my numbers. And uh, it both locks their mind that there were still two outstanding bills for the fast forward. Right. Um, so, I, so I went ahead and I purchased six pagers. Um, so I've had four members on. Um, and that's what I figured doing instead of us carrying our portable radios, um, we could have pagers instead of carrying our portable radios and leave the portable radios in our cars or whatever. And uh, I just put another gentleman on that lives up on Perry Street. Um, so that would issue five pagers out, and the sixth one would be a spare. And uh, <coughs> with them, with them, six pagers, um, that would save the cost of the wear and tear on the portable being carried around by the passport members um, that are solo passport members, like Dog. And, Ribbon, I think his name is from up on Diggins Road. And this gentleman that I just put on from Perry Street. Um, and I would think I wouldn't have any radio um, expenditures besides batteries um, every two or three years to just replace the batteries. And, um, so that's where that's where I overspend. And that's why um, because I was I had forgot all about it and sort of an alley and uh, on the two bills that were outstanding. So that put me over budget when I ordered the six pagers. How how many? How many people do we actually have on the fast squad that actually respond? Because isn't there and who's Rolly, you know you know more about this or is it Roger or somebody here that more about this? And I'm just <clears throat> I guess my question is is the fast cot squad really working? Are we in a situation where they get called but there's nobody available because we have so few numbers? It's like, it's like we, we had people and we didn't have equipment, and now we got the equipment and we don't seem to have the people. Um, I mean, and I know the cooks are, you know, are actively backing off stuff, and I can appreciate that. You reach a certain age where you go, I'm backing off stuff. Um, so I don't, I guess my question is this a noble experiment that maybe isn't working too well? Not, and not, not for lack of effort from anybody, but the issue that, that, um, Fire departments face lots of volunteers. You know, you may be getting a little bit of money, but you're, you know, in reality, you're volunteering, and it's getting harder and harder to have those sorts of things work in communities. I don't have the numbers on top of my head, but I can tell you, um, I had just done our license renewal for the Vermont EMS, and I think we answered like 90 some odd calls, and I think. The town of Hyde Park had 160 calls, maybe 91 calls mm -hmm. in the town. And uh, Da, I think she had when I just did the last six months payroll back in June. I think she had like 15 or 16 calls that she had gone on. Um, George, myself, and this Michael guy had over 20 calls. Okay. That we have answered. 
Now the report I got was 104 calls, and the response was like 47. That was I like from one. Yeah, from the January to and then June, you guys, nobody was on call for fire squad in June, right? <coughs> the end of the month, no, um, Don and George were gone. And Everybody was, was gone? Yeah. Vacation or whatever? Yeah. Now you got, you got uh, four people on the fire squad, right? Four, and I just put one. Yeah, another guy on. just come on, five. So yeah. Got five. What happens? What's what's the big thing here, Ron? If if we're committing to the fast squad for the town, and they don't get people to go to the calls, what what? <laughs> I know this is kind of a gray area. Well, we have a response through Dems. So NEMS is going to respond right. to every call in the end. It's not where we are providing service. The FAST <coughs> squad sort of jumps those calls to a certain it's degree. basically like an extra service yeah. that they're getting. No, it's great because you pick me up off the floor. So, um, I'm not saying no, it's, that. No, he's right. It's literally it's the FAST squad because, because again, the, the goal is that literally you're closer. So you can literally get there faster than NEMS can get there. We've, we're, we're familiar with them too. <laughs> you know. You know, it's um, great. My wife, you know, she, she didn't know what was going on. The kids didn't know what's going on. But I think uh, I think only question I got, Brad, is of your five members now, with a hundred and four calls between January one and May thirty one, about well, five months. And you guys responded, I say you guys, the fast cross responded 47 times. And some of the members are very active and some of the members aren't very active. And you've got five people, and out of those five people, two people already carry fire department uh, pagers anyways, right? And no, is, is Jordan, there? Jordan and I, we carry fast squad stuff. Yeah, but it isn't isn't the fast squad? I'm going to say pager. Oh, oh, same frequency. Frequency. It's the same frequency, but every half an hour there's an alert tone that goes off because the FCC requires this alert tone to go off. So on, the, on the squad or the fire department? In any any radio, any radio channel now, and you can ask Roger about that. Um, he'll no more information yeah. about that. Um, so if we lock our pagers out to the channel of just High Park, it's only going to open <coughs> up if it, if that radio is programmed with the fire department alert and it and it'll open that channel up, but it won't open North High Park's channel uh, or the fast water or we won't hear okay. the water okay. and lake guys talking. Uh, yeah. That way we don't hear that right. You're not page all, go off yeah. every half an hour <clears throat> there because uh, when they upgraded their radios here, they didn't program them to do that and somebody down in the Montclair area got wind of it and pushed the issue and then everybody had to put this encoder channel or whatever tone thing is so every half an hour it's an identifier tone for every channel. So if you have a scanner, you'll hear every half an hour, you'll hear a probably 30 second tone. Beacon go off. So let, let me, I'm sitting here thinking I know how it works and I'm going, oh, this is all, that's always a good time to check because at least 50% of the time I'm wrong. Um, so I call 911. <clears throat> and uh, and um, I need help. Bill's uh, Bill's having a seizure. Then the fast squad automatically toned out to all the nine one one calls. Yes. Okay. And and Nims as well. Yes. Right. 
So Here's it's cyclotone. Yeah. So when the dispatch center right. okay. gets the 911 call, um, it pops up on the screen and it will say High Park Fast Broad, Northern EMS, High Park Park, <coughs> or if it's in the North Bay Park area, it will say North Bay Park in the Long County Sheriff's or that responding agencies for that area and then they'll set the tones off. So when that does go off, are, are you NEMS or are you Fast Broad? If I'm not working for NEMS, I sign on as Fast Broad. <laughs> Huh? You put the other hat on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. It's like lots of. Yeah. <laughs> um, if I'm at home in that, if it's in the town of High Park, I usually go as fast squad, and then if I go in with the ambulance, I don't charge the town. I go on them as payroll. Oh, gotcha. Okay. If I go just as the first responder, then I, I do my one hour for the for town yeah. to give us a call that we have answered. So that happens a lot. You jump on the, the ambulance when you go. It varies. It depends on the type of call. Um, you know, uh, lately we've been having some pretty serious calls, so yeah. I hop right on and go, and I go on the NEMS payroll and don't charge nothing, and we don't get marked down as a call for the, the fast spot. If I'm yeah, you don't get marked. You don't mark it down. No, no. Okay. Because if I go on NEMS payroll. <sighs> I'm not going to, because that would mess me up at the end of the year when I do my payroll, and I'm not going to double dip <coughs> there. So if I go with them, so I don't even bother doing anything for the fast one. It's basically but it's just, a, it's just a lot of work for you, Brian. I know it. <laughs> you know, being on the fire department, being on the ambulance, and being a fast squad member, and it seems so that you're the one that's always going to the fast squad calls. You know, I don't know, you know, there's nobody out there that wants to do this stuff no more. Yeah, because, well, I'm, NEMS, we're a paid service. We pay our employees, and um, I had three openings, and I got two bills, and I'm still I bet. working on one as for a medical position. Just nobody wants nobody wants to take the time and get the certifications yeah. and the people yeah. that have their of certifications they're just so burnt out and they don't <coughs> want to do it anymore. Right, right, reach point well again. Fire department's the same thing. Yeah. You know, it's just um, Yeah, people are knocking the door down for the fashion well, and the fire departments and any volunteers. Uh, yeah, any volunteers. The rescue there, they just Hosted a uh, EMT class. <coughs> and, uh, they were only able to get eight students signed up to take that EMT class. And years ago, 20, 25 years ago, when I went for my EMT, we had 25, 30 students in there. You know, and the year that I did my EMT class, we were the biggest group of testing for the state for them to come up. You know, so now that is. So, so how much over budget, Ron? How Those much over? You got it. You got it. No, you. I think you have it. <clears throat> Twenty-one hundred dollars. That was for the six pages. Okay. And what's your budget for the year? Yeah, just give me about. Two thousand for three thousand for payroll and twenty five hundred for other expenses. And uh, I didn't print off her final expenses. Um, out of the three thousand for the uh, payroll. I spent fifteen hundred. So there's fourteen something left in the in the uh, payroll right. card for right. dollars. <clears throat> well that's just and it doesn't seem as though you should have any other than payroll, you shouldn't have any equipment expenses this year, correct? Correct, because uh okay. the AEDs that 
I'm going to purchase are the two that we made a separate line item for back last year at the budget time. Um, okay. So that you got a lot of me X amount of money, so that will come out of that right. part, and right. Allie so, has that as a separate line item. Okay. There, so um, I shouldn't have no radio maintenance budget and supplies. I would, we always restock from NEM, so. Okay, so how, how about for the, I have to remember which calendar year, which budget I'm dealing oh, with. Yeah, okay, let's go, okay, let's see, we're July. Okay, we're still, okay, because yeah. so we're so early in the year. Let's just, if you, if it looks as though you're going to have any equipment expenses, talk to us first before yep. we order anything, okay? Yep. And see if we can't sort of slide through this year. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping, you know, with my mess up, you know, and I apologize, yeah. you know, and, Al, and Allie said that she's changed it where she goes through the bills once a week now. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'll have somebody else backing me up and right. catching me. Right. You know, so if I forget that I had to send two bills in and then I ask her, she's going to say, well, this is what you have. <coughs> you have two bills here that still have, need to be paid right. and all right. that. So yeah, I don't think it's a firing squad so offense. So what would happen, Brad, if you had, like, two more people <coughs> walk into the door and want to be on the fast squad? I mean, what I would do is I would, I have enough portable radios, so okay. they would, for the time being, okay. um, you have just so you got set. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so the 2100 over was 2018 19. Yes. Right? Last yeah. Year's, last year's budget. Right. And, and you got $1,500 left for the same, for the same year, and this is right now for uh, 2019 14, 20. I had 14 something left out of the pay, uh, out of the salaries. Uh, 2018 19? Yes. Yeah. So actually, you're only short $600 if you were to use that payroll money. Yes. If, that you didn't use. Right. If, if you Unless decided to take that salary of the 1400 and something, 1481, I think it was, it would be only 600 500 some odd. Yeah. Well, we can just sort of, I would say, I would suggest we kind of cruise right now this year and see what happens. We know. We know we've got space there if something comes up and we need to do something. Yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah. let's just, if you see any expenses yeah. coming, you know, let us know and then we'll okay. figure out what we need to do. As okay. I say right now, I think we're okay on kind of. Yeah, because I, like I said, um, down the road, I don't see any right. huge expenditures. So this year you're on your 2019, 2020. You just tied yeah. on since 1st of July. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. You don't know what you got for balance up to date now, do you? Um, so you're saying in this year you're not going in this 2019, 2020, you're not going to use any maintenance money, which you're telling us, right? Right. Yeah. right. That's what it looks like. So that would take care. Yeah, that would take care of it. That would take care of the. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So I'm just trying to understand. Yeah. Yeah. And if he looks like he's got some expenses, well, we know we know we right, have to right. You'll come back so to we'll us. Do, we'll, so as it is we'll now, we'll use 2019-20 money to make up that. Yeah. To make that up. Yeah, I don't have. That's all right. And I just yeah. as long as I understand the maintenance thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's um, where we're so going. Yeah. yeah. Because with purchasing the two new AEDs. That's that separate line item. Yeah. Right. Um, so right. that would, that should would, be that would affect that. Yeah. So, um, like I said, I don't see any huge expenditures. So I should have plenty of money to roll back over into the budget after this fiscal year is over. But you never know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Said Susan, smiling as it's a new pressure tank in the water treatment system going, ooh, well, <clears throat> okay. That was a nice vacation we took. <laughs> okay, I think any more questions for Brad? I think I we got it, understand it. Yep.
Nope. Yep. Good yeah. luck on getting other people to come in. Yeah. We'll, you got one more. Yeah, yeah. I know it. It's, uh, I, again. Thank you for doing they it. Don't, uh, they don't do nothing in vocational down there for medic, do they? Or? They are doing a, um, they call it an EMR class. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually got to reach out to them down there and Good. see if there's any Pike Park students mm -hmm. that are enrolled because that's in the tech center. So um, it might be all students from another school. But because you could use two, three, four people. Yes, definitely. Yeah. But in your role, you, you don't have to train like the fire departments? We have. Um, about four years ago, EMS changed. Every two years, we have to reset our license. We have to have, <coughs> like for an EMR, there's a certain amount of credit you have to do training on and get um, for the two years, and then EMTs, and it goes up as a certification. So like with me as an EMT, I have to have 80 hours of certain requirements that the National Registry requires me to research and then I send my paperwork to the National Registry and then they bless me and then I send it to the state EMS office and so how, how does your help get get uh, trained what's that how, how does your help get trained we do in-house squad trainings and then also uh, once a year in October EMS has a EMS conference for a weekend so they offer a bunch of different classes oh, I see yeah. and then you can sign up and go to them and then um, all the squads um, once a month usually have squad training so and what most of the squads do is take what the national registry requires for training they work on that now, do you does a high park fast squad ever go up and train the nems and um no call? we haven't we used to um with Dot and George on Morristown, and same with me, um, we've always got our training from somewhere else. Um, we've always had members that weren't just solo with us, so we've never had that problem. Because you've got some pretty good trainers up there, Nams. Yes. Because I know the Sheriff's Department, they come and showed us yep. a lot of CPR stuff on babies, and, but it was very, very good. Yep. Yep. So um, we always usually go either service and NEMS or yeah. Morristown or and then uh, once a month the, our district EMS will have a, a training seminar where everybody all the services are allowed to go to that so well again well thank you for your yeah. service Brad I'm yeah. sure thank a lot you of these doing. calls you don't walk in on things very pleasant sometimes yeah so thanks again thank you guys Thank you for your support. Okay. Next, North Hyde Park Eden Memorandum. I got a quick update. The <coughs> MOU went out, which is a resolution and a yep. MOU regarding shared services, capital expenses, and yep. such. Uh, Eden hasn't commented yet, and I got an email from Brent saying that, I don't know if it was from the fire department or from the town of Eden, that the both, both boards should meet, but I don't know, if that, is that from the North High Park? That's from us. We think this is just going to go a lot easier in school. You've got the start of it. If October 3rd, now you guys already told me they can, and you guys come, we meet at the firehouse, and we just go through the MOU to start things out, and then everybody can be on the same understanding, make whatever changes to be made and then meet again rather than us coming out here listening to what you guys are saying us going up there listening to what they're saying we bring it back to you we bring what you say up to them we just want to meet in the same room on october 3rd and get no time get, and just get uh 6 30 i say wrong 6 30 6 6 30 then that way we can just get everything out there get the first draft done up and not have to be back and forth by different meetings to get one done mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Sure. Second one. Move some around here. Third. <clears throat> 
Thursday at 6, okay? Okay, done. Okay, any feedback before then or we just wait and just... We actually had a discussion with the water board. We're trying to figure out the insurance thing. I think Roger was calling. We're still working on it. Yeah. We're still trying to get ideas because like the MOU is showing you want 100% on the trucks and we're trying to see if the department wants to the insurance on the building so that we have better numbers on that for you. Yeah. Okay. Because they are, I don't know if you've heard, the water department doesn't want to be on the MOU sheet. Well, it's not really the water department, it's the fire district. The fire district. We have to leave the water department out of it. The fire district yeah. is asking to be left off the MOU, but we're trying to get all the insurance and back together. So we'll have more of that later. I gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if I'll have it all by October 3rd because she's gone on vacation at 6.30 next week. Either way, not that's the work in front of the But I'm yeah. just talking with her today. Okay. All right. Take care of that. Next. Oops. Uh, right. The North Hyde Park Eden Fire Department use of fire truck proceeds six thousand dollars. I do know that I've been talking with Brent and some of the, the guys up in North Hyde Park. As you know, we got the new truck and they were able to sell the old truck or get twelve thousand dollars for the old truck. So that twelve thousand dollars, fifty percent of it went to the town of Eden, fifty percent goes to the town of Hyde Park. Uh, town of Eden allowed them to take their six thousand dollars and put it back onto the truck. And what they did, I believe you got bought hoses with your 6,000. I was talking to Brent the other day, and he asked if the town of Hyde Park would let them take the $6,000, and they want to put in a generator for incident, incident lighting. Yeah, that's one item. Uh, looking at putting a gas power generator, because we didn't put the generator to run off the truck. Mm -hmm. And the way I look at it, that money was theirs, wasn't the department's anyways. With, with, with the truck and stuff, we left them to have the money. If if we don't do it, all it's going to go right back into the their equipment fund, and they could take it out of the equipment fund and buy the generator. So I think that the, the simple way around it, the tipped on them, it is allowed to take that $6,000 and put it onto their new truck. Well, I think when you when you bought the truck, we sort of didn't formally agree that's what we were going to do because right. each town needed to talk yeah, about it. But right, but but you guys perfect. you guys went to the super duper stripped down model because these things that you're adding they charge like three or four well, times. No, as, this yeah. is, no, this is different. I mean like <coughs> with Eaton's money we were able to put all brand new holes on the truck so that we didn't have to turn around and buy holes that was twenty five years old. Well that's the okay. holes on we bought a no, no, I understand you want to do different, but it's part of the reason you bought the strip down. No. Okay, was that you thought that buying this it yourself was going to be more cost effective? More exactly. Feasible right. Order. Right. If we bought it from the truck company, it, would have cost it was cost a lot more. That's what I'm saying. Problem. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Right. Yeah. Right. So part of the reason, because we, right. you, we, you hoped you were going to get something for the old truck, and then we turned that money around and put it in the new truck, and you'd end up with a more cost-effective way to equip that new truck. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. It seemed to me that's where we're going which is a really roundabout way of me saying, I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> I took a long enough to get there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been, it's already been a long well, week. It's only Monday. Let them have their $6,000. <clears throat> Does that work for you, Roger? Yep. Yep. To buy the, um, I, I, I call it extra items because we don't exactly know exactly what extra we're items. Exactly what okay, what's going to be? So the, 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 only, the only thing I have is that in the future when somebody asks us for a list of the equipment what you're going to get with it we've asked david's asked for it two or three times never got it i just think that um you know you, you should follow what was asked for 
But now you've told us what you want with it, fine. Well, I mean, and, and that's because we have had the truck now for about a month. We see where there's a few informalities and in what we want to put on it to make it more. So we we have that together. I so I'm not going to exceed $6,000 as a purchase of extra items. Right. Which I can list out for you. So right. Okay, that's I'll, I'll second that motion. Okay. Okay, we got it. Any more discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Okie dokie. Thank you. Okay, yeah, sure. Now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. The bottles that we discussed a year ago. The what? The air bottles. The air yeah. Uh, those are going to be coming up from by the end of October. Yeah. I think I think the schedule I got had this we got the schedule here. They were scheduled for 2020, right? Correct. Or 21. No, I think I think we we're phasing it in. I read it in here somewhere. Yeah. We we're phasing it in. There was eight thousand dollars allocated for it. No, current to make sure about the money because we've got bottle pricing. They're they're about eight hundred and seventy five dollars a piece. So it was current current year was eight thousand and then twenty one was eight thousand. Fire. Two years in a row. So. Yeah, it was sixteen altogether. So we had allocated back. So you got eight thousand? No, we got sixteen really. Well for two years, yeah. right. Oh, yeah, oh, so you got eight for this year and eight for next eight, year. Eight hundred and seventy-five dollars per bottle. Per bottle. Eight seventy-five, yeah, per bottle. But they're good. They're these uh, fiberglass bottles are good for fifteen years. They should be good longer than that. The military uses them longer than that, but so what we do by the standards every fifteen years. So what we do the old bottles is send them some <coughs> third world country so we can use them. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> so it's not safe enough for us, but safe enough for somebody else. Well, when they got nothing, yeah. But you said that's 8000 for two years? Each year, yeah, Each the next year, two years. Per year. 8000 so this year and 8000 the next year's budget. It'd have to be $8,000 working on this year's on this year. 19, two, uh, 19 two, and 2020 budget, which you're working on now. So the eight, the other eight thousand would come in on a twenty twenty one. That's what we voted on. So when could I order those bottles and present you the bill? I guess is what I'm saying. I guess the eight thousand. I mean, you could use eight thousand of it now, right? You can do it now. Yeah. Okay. You, you eight thousand. Okay. Just wanted to make sure if there was a date of time. Yeah. There's so any time. Any time between now and. Um, no, you're good because we're into this year. So you want to wait and get them all at once. Yeah. Between now and next June 30th. Yeah, June 30th. Yeah. Then July of next year, you could order the eight, the other eight thousand dollars. Good. He's thinking. So you got <laughs> you got have some replaced by October. Anything after July one? Well, right. I want to get them marked before October. No, but right, but uh, they have to be done. Yeah. October, I'm going to have to take packs out of service and say. Right, oh, right. I understand. I just didn't know if you wanted to wait, get them all at once, or you want you need to get the eight now. I can check and see the priority on the date. Well, maybe better get half now because. The only, the only thing I don't like about getting them all at once, they've got to be. be It'll have to be redone all at once. Right. The only thing on this whole day is we get them all at once this time. Then you got to get them all at once next time. They're good for 15 years. And I was told by the end, we're going to end up. And the end of those 15 years, of these balls coming in, we're going to have to replace the packs. So you're looking at, we're looking at another eight packs that would have to be replaced in 15 years now. They're basically telling us your packs are 15 years old. If you make them another 15 years, That's you're already way outdated. So at some point, we need to look at updating. Yeah, the packs. So $800 if you buy them all at once, or if you, even if you didn't, in another 15 years, the packs would probably be taken into service. Maybe 30 years old. So. 
So, so know, knowing that. So what I'll actually do is I'll look into the price for the bottle because if it makes more sense to buy 16 all at once and get a lower price, then I just have to wait as long as the bottle still hold up or your second year of the eight thousand. Right? Till, till, till next July 1st, right. right. So if I can number one, make them till July 1st and get a lower price per bottle for 16 instead of eight, that's what I'll find out. Gotcha. Okay. But yes. Well, I see what the difference is. July first and get them all on some of mine for eight hundred dollars a piece. Yeah. Have, it's going to put eight thousand dollars farther down the road. Right. As long as you have a bill in June, right. then have one in July. Yeah. I'll make phone calls. Now. Okay. All right. And then just let yeah. let us know what looks like it makes the most sense for you. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Municipal planning grant. A consortium with Eden and Waterville. <clears throat> we have a proposal from the Town Planning Commission to sign a resolution um, supporting a grant application to the state of Vermont for up to $25,000. Let's see if we can slow them down a little bit. <clears throat> Here's the uh, resolution. So basically, the resolution would authorize the three town application Eden and Waterville and Hyde Park. And regional planning would do the work as staff, their staff would do the work to work with the three towns. And regional planning's budget would pay the local match because it's a regional program. So they have funds okay. that they would use as part of their operating budget to provide the local match. So there's no match for the three towns, but the work will produce two main products. One is a traffic calming study for state highways within the villages of those three towns, and then a master plan for the redevelopment of the Grange which would look at parking issues, septic issues, programming issues, structural issues, and how the group meets and operates and set out some sort of timeline for them to make better use of the Grange Hall as the new Guyon Valley Hall is the re rebranded name. But so this would go in now and then there would be a grant decision later this year and then there's usually 18 to 24 months of work that would be done from public input run by the no no town staff time, which right, is nice. Right, the right. regional planning will run all, all planning. of that. Right. Yeah. So the planning commission met last week and approved the resolution and now the needs a joint yeah. approval by the select board. Okay. Makes sense to me. Yep. Yep. Probably, do we need a motion? Motion to sign the resolution. Make a motion to sign the resolution. In the right column, there's a signature. Second. For everybody. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Okay, we all get to sign this one. We all have. Mm -hmm. Stay in the right column if you could. Stay in the right column. He's not the left yeah, column. Not you. I'm, really, I'm talking to Roger on debt mostly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I heard in there. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. You got one coming. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Reclassification hearing. So a draft notice of hearing that's in your packet, which included a list yep. of nine roads uh, proposed for a. This is just a proposal for a public hearing on October 17th, which is a Thursday, or two weeks after your fire meeting. Great. Right. Uh, on a Thursday, three o'clock. This is one of the, this is the complete list. Remember we did Webster Road as kind of a yep. preliminary because that was a little more complicated. Yep. This is more, this is the formal process. So the nine roads, I'll just read it from the notice. Uh, Munson Road, which is a class four, would be discontinued. Uh, 
there's another class four, but it's unnamed near Garfield Crossroad that would be discontinued. And these are roads that either have nobody on them or they're short driveway of a couple hundred feet, maybe to an old barn or farmhouse or something that the town plowed at one time, but now it's not maintained. Well, that, plot, that, that Garfield Crossroads got houses on it. No, that, it's at the end of Garfield. It's on the north side of Cleveland Corners Road. There's two little spur roads that go off to somebody's house. Oh, okay, yes, I know what you mean talking about. One's yes. unnamed and yeah. one's named Munson Road. Yes. Yeah. Just pretty, I, don't, I don't know how to describe it, but. The triangle. Oh, okay. okay. There, it did. there we go, triangle. Yeah. Did it? I got There's it. There's a camp up there, maybe, or yeah. something. Just down where the canoe broke in half. Up right to the right. Yeah, they're very short. They're they're tenth of a mile, yeah. or point oh five miles, which is only. And the Munson Road, Munson Road one goes to the caboose up there. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Uh, the third one's Orchard Terrace, which is the very end on Bob Falker's property. Oh yeah. We're going to build a new turnaround on Andrew's yeah. property yeah. to get off his because that road goes down to his little circle. That's yeah. almost impossible to plow down. So the highway crew eventually will get a new turnaround there. Borneman Road, that's a request basically from John Borneman. There's a, for some reason it's still class three, but it, the turnaround is 800 feet <laughs> before the end of the class three mm -hmm. is mapped. So that, it, that last 800 feet goes by his house and up into the hills and we don't go there, never, never have as far as I know. Um, I think he granted an easement to a neighbor up there so that the neighbor can get off the class three part. Yeah, that was a big issue here five, six, seven, eight years ago. Yep. So I think there's been a, there's a new easement that allows that person to get up in there, but it was issued by Boardman. Right. And the neighbor would be uh, Bill Patch's deer camp up here. Yeah. And Jeremiah's deer camp. Remember, Phil Tomlin had a camp this so. So it's, that's kind of a cleanup, you know, with class three, okay. we plow and maintain, and we're not going to the end. So the only, and that doesn't go to Eden either. If it went all the way to Eden, then the Eden Select Board would have to have the same joint hearing. Okay. Number five is Webster Road. That's reclassifying the current class four to a public trail. So that comes off some of the GPS yeah. mapping and people stop at the yeah. class three part yeah. on the 100 side. Richardson Road, that's 0.45 miles of class three, which would be discontinued and not plowed anymore. That's a, basically a private driveway with one house. Yeah. And Sterling View Road is number seven. That is, uh, I'm a little unclear on that. That I think is the end of the road. If you go up there now, the road takes like, the very end, it takes a left. Really sharp angle. What line. are you? Sterling, Sterling View at the view. very end. Yeah. Past the part they reclaimed last two years ago now. And the road goes up into a paved turnaround, a big yeah. circle, a teardrop turnaround. The, the only one I question would be the Richardson Road. That, that is a town road down through there. It's so class three road. Always has been. Yeah. That is. And there is a house, there is a taxpayer down there. Yep. And he's, he's been notified. <laughs> what, what? Why wasn't Slobodas Road notified? Why wasn't Gallon Road notified? Oh, this is the first cut. There's there's probably another 40 roads on the list of things to look at. These are the ones that took where people have either asked us to discontinue <coughs> or just doesn't make any sense with 200 foot spurs. But there's, there is more roads. Uh, so Sterling View would go, right now the highway guys don't have a legal turnaround. They have to go off the right of way and turn around at some turnaround that they built, but they don't have a right away for it. This would keep them on Sterling View to does a loop at the end on a paved, already paved road. Uh, Depot Street extension is uh, from Mill Street out past the trailhead. Yep. It is listed as a class three road, but we stopped plowing at the Mill Street. So this is another one of those cleanup. Uh, okay. So yeah. we've got it mapped yeah. as a class three all the way down and through to the last house, Latham's house. Yeah. But we okay. only go there sporadically and the board, select board needs to at some point make a decision on the parking lot too for the trailhead, whether that's going to be a, last year we plowed it, <coughs> I don't think they had much trouble with that, but that's another discussion. But we would basically have a class four road that's just 
minimal maintenance from Mill Street to the trailhead, and then the rest of it right. to Latham would be uh, I would class I worry about it too much until the end of the snowstorms. Yeah, yeah. And then that parking lot you're talking gets about. filled up with snow. Yeah. yeah. So we'd still keep the right of way and use it for that purpose as well as the access to the mm -hmm. trail. But past there won't be a class three to Latham's house, which we don't plow anyway. Right. So it depends on what if you want to upgrade that sec. This is only we didn't discuss this, but you can upgrade from Mill Street to the trail as class three. Mm -hmm. But we haven't gotten that far yet. No, the road I can't understand why why we're not even talking about is the Green River Reservoir Road. Why in the world are we even going by the Howard Stern to go to camp? The only thing by there is state land. And the, and the dam, yeah. And we can get nothing out of it. And I think the only reason they've done that, and the, 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 I may be wrong, Dave, is because of the, of the power, the water, the water, the water. They can read the meter and what the power is. Something. Yeah, well, they have to regular sticks, inspections or something. Sticks well, in my mind five, six years yeah. ago. Yeah, well, well, Morrisville turned to a plow around less than a mile from there. I'm, I'm plowing on road. <laughs> we don't get nothing out of it. Done. We, we don't get nothing out of it. You got to worry about it. Just did what I remember five, six years ago with it being coming up. Yeah, well, they, yeah, they wrote a letter said we prefer you not to discontinue maintenance because we have to inspect yeah. the dam twice a week, something yeah. like that. Okay. And during the summer, there's high use from thousands of people that go oh, yeah, to the reservoir. Right, right. So one way or the other, it's, an, it, it's a there's limited limited town. We'll, we'll put activity. that on the next nine. We'll do no, the first I, nine. I, I just think yeah, that still, was we plow all winter long. We plow all winter long. The only people that head up there is yeah. more for water and light to monitor the gauges up there. Yeah, I think there's one house, one camp. Somewhere in there. Not beyond, not beyond Howard's turn. Is not. No, that's where the, the house is across right. the road from right. the camp. Broke, from, I think. Yeah. yeah. And past there, there's nothing, right? There's a park access and a dam. So, but yeah, if it's a, if it's all or nothing thing, that's pretty easy to warn. If you start to say how are you going to turn around it, then that's a little bit more of a discussion. Mm -hmm. But it's, a, it's up to you whether you want to add a tenth road. It's not impossible to do. <coughs> Just I know it's a big. It'll be a big discussion because it's there park reservoir people might come up if it's a discontinuance mm -hmm. or do you do summer maintenance only and discontinue winter maintenance you go always fishing up there no i go over the bank where do you want to be <laughs> <coughs> yeah but morris right but you're right morrisville's got to get up there okay yeah the, the water and light needs year round oh yeah they got to get up here i understand that but but we're but you're looking at somebody like in the richardson road the guy that pays taxes got 240 acres at the end of it we're looking to discontinue his road. No, and, they, we, the, and we've got tax money coming in, but the, we, we can do a road that we don't get nothing out of. The reason this list is nine is because these are roads that had come up with a request from the public to make the change. The other ones we left for another day. The Richardsons didn't want it. No bull techie, they don't want it. Well, no. that's The word I've gotten more than once from him is that he could take it or leave it. Well, where I got right from the horse's mouth, he don't want to discontinue. Yeah. Well, you well, got to turn around somewhere. Huh? But right. turn around at uh, turn around at Davis Hill and Richardson Road. Okay. If right. you want to turn around, or you go to the end of Davis Hill and turn around, to just the spur road. It's a spur road off of Davis Hill. There's no other intersections on that. So does and, he want and, it? And you do well, or doesn't he want it? He well. does want it. Well, well, this is a request to him to participate in the hearing to, right. <laughs> to uh, get to let it. us know if he wants uh, to. Now, now what, he's going to be in England on the 17th of October. Well, he can send the letter. He can send the letter? Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You don't I'll, have to I'll have him contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody. Yeah. yeah, just have him send us a letter and say he understands there and that yeah, they want to have it continued. Yeah, no, if he, if and we, he's do, we, do get, we do get pilot out of Green River Reservoir, so you do get. What do we get a year out of Green River? Oh, there's a whole report on what we get from Green River. It's, well, but the pilot money that we... Yeah, no. I, it's right. a, it was a big report. It's, it's, it was wrong, so I had to look at it again. The numbers are wrong. Yeah. But anyway, there, something we hadn't been paid for at all for years and got paid yeah, for. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a definitely, Dave, I think your answer is there's a net loss to maintaining that road. Right. So Richardson Road 
is one of those roads about the cost of all, of all the 20 or other roads that are served by one, two, one or two houses and are costing more than they're sending in tax dollars. So when you're trying to, <laughs> biggest comment, when you run a business, you look at the numbers and say, you're wasting a lot of money on people that are basically having their driveway plowed by the town. <coughs> so how do, you, how do you justify plowing year round for somebody that's there part time in the winter? Just like you said, it's closed up most of the time. And the times that he does have guests there, they're parking in our turnaround and create a problem for the truck backing out because they're not used to the, you know, the guests aren't used mm -hmm. to the need for that parking area. So it creates some problems too. I don't know. I don't, you know, Richardson Road is a good, good example of your, the, the dichotomy of somebody paying taxes and somebody getting yeah. plowed out with well, one house needs, and a half mile. You know? There is a problem down there. He's going to have to come along and say, hey, you guys, they'll let the town put yeah. some gravel in to make a turnaround. Make a turnaround. No, we, right, we so. built it. Yeah, we built the turnaround, okay. and then they park, park in it because it's a good place to park. <laughs> <laughs> so then when it snows, you really they can't turn around. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's not an easy question. You know, this Richardson Road is a great example of how far the town wants to go to do good business decisions. And put the put the passion and the history aside a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a hard thing. You fill the room like we did a few years ago. But if you're making business decisions, it's easy. You don't go there. There's no public benefit at the end of Richardson Road, which is the town standard public good benefit and welfare. There isn't that. Well, I understand that, but you th I still don't think that a select board or this select board or anybody can can all of a sudden say, no, we're not doing it no more after we've done it for... Oh, I don't think that's what you're saying. Well, that's not what we're saying. We're saying that we're going to have a hearing and we want people to come in and talk about it. This isn't... You're right. We can't... We don't do that. We say, here are the roads that we're looking at. You, wanted, you, notice, you notice people. You wanted they that come in and talk about it. You want us to hold the notice until April? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. March. <laughs> <laughs> then I can say what I really want to say. <laughs> that was that damn thing right there. <laughs> but, yeah. but there is, there, I just wanted the board to, there is a real, you know, passion sure, for having right. things not change and then the town's being pushed on the tax side to do things efficiently. They, so, they so based it. on your logic, then we really better fix that road going up to those three houses right across the street here. Because we've been doing it for years. They're in the town. We've been doing it. <laughs> so we need to upgrade their road? No, we buy a helicopter. We can fly <laughs> <laughs> that, that may be cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to upgrade the road. He got you. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a good one. It's a, uh, it, yeah. it, 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 in it, fire. It they fill. deserve a road to their house. It can fill a whole meeting up. Absolutely. The right. last one is Crabapple Lane. Good. We can keep Richards on and take it off. That's, I mean, this is what we're talking about. I'm just going down the list, and then you have a motion. To no, I'd, I'd it leave it on it, and if they want to, they want to stay put. They just and need to send us a letter and let us know. Crab Apple Lane is the last one. That's a brand new road that uh, was intended to be taken over years ago, but nobody ever finished the. Yeah, um, we walked. Cricket Hill. We walked. We walked out there. You will go the whole length of that Crab Apple. Yeah, there's a turnaround expansion at the end that Mark wanted to be able to turn the truck around. So the original layout of the survey and whatnot yeah. was not really sufficient for town highway trucks. So the right-of-way survey was done that expanded the turnaround area, and Little River went through and cleared all the ownership issues so that we can have a new survey to update that. Uh, but it was it's always been intended to be a town road. That's not a, even a new proposal. That's 20 years old probably. It's it a town road now? It's a... It's a um, well, it, it, it is unclassified it is. town highway. Right. Unclassified meaning it never finished the classifying process. Remember we went up there. That's the same thing as uh, as uh, Tingle, but it's a, Tingle. Draper's. Uh, uh, yep, Mason. Uh, Mason Road. Mason, we had to go through that right uh, last year. You know, yeah. Tingle Road is in the unclassified because it never made it to the classified road. Somebody just said go plow it, and we've been plowing it, mm -hmm. but there's no paperwork. A legal paperwork or a survey to officially do it. So there we're not getting state aid. 
if it's not on the town highway map, we don't get any highway aid from the state. So that's one reason okay. to classify it appropriately because yep. even when you sign your annual certificate, you're certifying that you're maintaining those roads to those standards. And if it's not on there, we're not getting any money, but you're maintaining it. So you're operating at a loss on those regarding state aid. <laughs> and some of that's you know, your, your fault, so to speak, is the board going back in time where the board would say, go plow it. Right. And we'll get the deed, and then nobody gets the and deed. Nobody yeah. gets and the, it. Right? And the highway crew just keeps mm -hmm. plowing it. You know, so so now we're trying to undo some of that history a little bit and get it one way or the other for sure. So those are the nine. Uh, the hearing is the October seventeenth at three o'clock, which will we got to be here for that. Yeah, it's a Thursday. What <clears throat> what I'd say you might just want to add in there is so that folks know if they can't come to the hearing that they could submit testimony in writing before yeah uh, 12 17 3 30 3 o'clock 3 o'clock notice so the state statute for classification reclassification is every step is a little legal so you have to have a motion to board <coughs> that notice for so, October 17th so is everybody on these roads we're talking about are, are they getting the notice that they get a certified letter yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. <coughs> including their mortgage company and anybody that has an easement which is like up in Borderman okay. so the notice is hereby given resolution for the 17th of October is the motion. Okay, so you need a motion? So moved. Need a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Again, remember just so that we get in there that people know they, mm -hmm. if they're away, they can submit. <coughs> 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 I'm saying, yeah. The Alistairs, uh, Jane, Jane, yeah. they're going to be in England. Could, could they, with a letter, could they postpone it to the next draw? Uh, when will they be back? Uh, Do you know? Back in Montreal the 20th. I don't know when they're going to be back in the area here. But they're leaving October 1st for a yeah, you can do the 24th if you want. It was the 17th was just a Thursday afternoon. So if you, if you think they'll be Well, we can, we can always at the 17th, if they want to wait, we can, we can <coughs> postpone that one until a later date, Let right? Me go, I'll, I'll or email continue. Jamie yeah. to get home tonight. Yeah, yeah. And okay. we can just, at that date, we can postpone yep. it, but yep. know ahead of time what we want to do. Yep. Yeah, you can do an order that's right. partial, too. <clears throat> you can say, oh, geez, we really got to work on this one and spin off the other ones that are right. easy. Good. Because obviously what, it seems to me what they're going to have to figure out is since we've already built the turnaround, if they don't want to be discontinued, then when it snows, they're going to have to keep people toward the park right yeah, the someplace park. else. Yep. Yeah. I understand that, yeah. Hmm. But we didn't, we didn't throw a portrait terrorist last year. No, you agreed to work on the turnaround with Anderson. Too, yeah, we went over there and met. Yeah, you, we agreed on where the turnaround would be. Right. The, there was an MOU, which is also on the agenda tonight, to say that you'll continue to work it and Andrews is allowing us to have, use his property. Yeah. yeah. That was all that was done. This is part of the legal process to get it off the books, so to speak. Okay. Okay, do we need anything else with the roads or we move ahead? There's something I have to sign somewhere. Yeah, I'll, uh, 
come change the notice and then you can sign it to include that notice of the oh yeah okay there's the winter plowing the class four in the orchard terrace mou which is in the it's in the back of our pack <clears throat> The MOU about that road. Page, yeah, he, page twenty-two. Yeah. He um. He appealed his taxes, and we went out in the and the board civil authority didn't agree so he took it to the state so he went to court with it and he was just notified that the court agreed with the town okay, good. Good. <clears throat> okay so i guess we need a motion to to sign the mou so thank you all in favor signify by saying aye Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Oh, I hate to think about winter plowing right now. I don't know why. Okay, road name. <clears throat> road name. Yes, one, one road name. Is that the road that goes right after the bridge? On the left, yeah. It goes up to dead end the way the mire. Roger the Meyer is building a garage way at the end. Yeah. That's where it is. Nancy yeah, Pope, Nancy Pope used to live down there. Good in. Nancy Pope, Grogan now. Yeah. Couple of mobile homes on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Is that I, if you go over the bridge. Right, right dead there. Go over the bridge. No, I'm before the bridge. I'm thinking before the bridge. If I'm Barnes Road, you go over the river. Yeah. And you take a left on this new road. Yeah, you start up the hill there, right? Just just four or yeah. five hundred feet from yeah, the bridge. From the bridge. Right, right past the auto shop. Yeah. 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 I don't know what's down there. There's three houses. <coughs> oh, okay, okay. It's a duplex. Where John had his garage right there. You know the new auto place, the Honda guy? Yeah, yeah but, but by Bud Bud Watch yes. Sawmill. Yeah, yeah right no, down below that. Yeah, just below it. Yeah. Well, but by the houses that Bud built there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Bud just past those houses that he built. He built two right duplexes by the river there. along the river. Yeah. Yeah. One of those duplexes spun off on somebody's driveway that comes up further. So there was two houses. Now the third one was added, which is one of the duplexes that Bud built. So now there's three or more require a road name. So that's what that's all about. <laughs> Okay. That's, right. That's probably where they get to Merrill Drive. Merrill yeah, Drive. probably. <laughs> there, probably is. Okay. I make a motion that we accept the uh, private road as Merrill Farm Road. Second. Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <clears throat> let me let me back up one. I, I missed on seven on the on the winter plowing. Oh, the Diggins Road, the same section that's plowed. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that's, that's the same road that we've fooling around with, William McCall up there. Yeah, Tyler. Is that all taken care of yet? And we're still. There's still. It's Tyler's in court still. We're, yeah. We're not participating. Oh, that. okay. Yeah, that's right. We, but plow, we plow up to uh, Marshall Wynn's old house. The entire right. pond at the top right. of the hill. Yeah, right. okay. So because it's a class four road, that's not part of our regular winter maintenance schedule. And I don't, I think there's a couple other question marks on classification. I think uh, the other McKinstry Hill Road end. So rather than worry about all the little details, the board's past motions were continue last year's winter plowing mm -hmm. as is with no changes so that allows Diggins Road to be plowed up to the fire pond and right I think there's a little section of Langdon Loop or something that's really class four but we plow it yeah so those are the ones we're trying to unwind with these lists that we go you know the nine roads that's because we know about all these little technical issues but the only way to do it is through a formal 
process. So that would be the motion to continue plowing practices from 2018-19 into 1920. So moved. Okay. Second. Uh, uh, anything after is a uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 You guys awake down there? No, I did. I, oh, you I did. Okay. <laughs> Anybody opposed? <clears throat> the the question is, do you know that always comes up? Do we want to put any money into um, upgrading some of that? And apparently that conversation has been had before. Yeah, we got a call from one of the lot owners. I, are you guys, I don't even know, it's, it's been old. This is like a 2000, 2005, couple subdivisions the town approved up on the top of the hill. Are you familiar with the layout up there at all? No. Yeah, there's a, you go, there, there's two houses beyond. The fire pond. The fire pond. Or the old yeah. show band house. Yeah, right. Yeah. So there's about one, two, three, but that, four, five or six houses along Diggins Road from McKinstry Hill up to the State Park. Right. Because you got Jim Fontaine in there, plus you have that, the old barn, oh. plus whatever that is. Yeah. It's an old camp, up, a couple old camps. Yeah. yeah. Because the DRB went ahead and approved for almost... 10 or 11 house lots up there. Right, up off the They kind of left. punted on the highway improvements. So all these folks own pretty much all individual lots. There's a Gilbert subdivision at the very end on the left, which mm -hmm. is five yep. lots. Cusero has eight lots. And then you have a couple other lots that are vacant along the road. So you can, you can have 20, 25 houses up there if everything was built on. And they're all large lots, 10, 15, 20, 25 right. acres. <clears throat> All of them have been sort of in limbo a little bit because of the road status, which is class four, from Jim Fontaine's at the bottom of the hill up to the fire pond, mm -hmm. which you do plow case by case, and yep. then it continues at class four out to the state park. But when banks are looking <laughs> at how do you get their question, well, sure. and they find out they don't have guaranteed class three status, then people can't get financing as easily. So there has been no activity up there really since, I don't know if Hathaway was the last hot house, or, but there hasn't been a lot of new housing at all up there. Tyler did it on his own and he, know, he knew it was a class four and he was able to build his house. Mm -hmm. So but as far as these other folks, the proposal I got in, from one of the Crucero lot owners was, hey, what do I need for a new house permit in Hyde Park? Because it's been a while. He actually got that lot, which is called Lot 1, was approved twice. It was approved right after Cusero did the subdivision in 2005. And then the new owner came in in 2009. And both permits expired for whatever reason. So now he was coming back for a third time. <clears throat> the rules have changed so much, mostly state wetlands, stormwater, and wastewater rules, oh, yeah. that he has old state permits now, which have to be revisited and the road is still an issue so he asked is there any way we can at least move forward on the road and that's sort of where the board is like <coughs> well. so are, are most of those lots sold or are they lots that they want to sell Gilbert is unsold the family trust owns right. five or six lots at the very okay. end all the Cusa road lots have sold except for three that are almost up to the north there are a separate little pod of three that even go deeper into the woods yeah. the first five have a built road they put it's pretty near mckinstry's following that right yeah that keeps yeah. going yeah all the way uh, black dog lane that's or pretty something. up there so the five lots are all individual ownership have a road i think there's underground conduit whether the wires yes. in there i don't know yep. uh, and that's where this lot one was coming from what do i need and to the do pond, Dave? Huh? And the pond Dave? huh the Green River, you're talking about the Green River development. That Tony, yeah, Tony, there's a big sign up there. Tony Tony that. Put that sign up there. Yeah. <coughs> so four or five years ago, the select board got a cost estimate of 120000 to upgrade that section to class three. 
and the select board sent a little note out to the Cusero family and a couple of the new owners and said, hey, you know, what do you guys think? We always get this question about class three status. Here's what we think the project would cost. And are you willing to cost share? And no response. Because there was no meeting, there was no anything on that. This time it was the reverse. <laughs> the person that has been holding this lot for a number of years said, can we do this? And I think I have people this time in the association or whatever they have that would be interested in talking. And I said, fine, if you guys are interested in talking, we can dust off the $120,000 cost estimate. The rules have changed again. MRGP and stormwater rules right. all change. Right. And does the town want to consider meeting with the neighborhood to, to figure out that question of, to, at least to the fire pond? I, I thought <coughs> in the past that the consensus was for the, the for the developers to put that if they want that class three to pay to put it up to class three specs. That was not that was down. a that was a clear condition of the DRB for the Gilbert subdivision. It was not clear at all for the Cusero. <coughs> Most of the minutes and notes that were taken at times say that it's class three to the fire pond. I don't and that's the information the DRB <coughs> acted on. Well, class three only goes far as... No, no, I'm saying they had misinformation at the DRB oh. hearing. Oh. So it never came up during the subdivision review as an issue. It was a town responsibility to get it there. Only after all the lots sold did we say, you, you had the wrong information, sorry. It's really a class four road and it's a 13% grade with a whole bunch of drainage problems. Yeah, well, you never, you never make a grade on that hill and there's a spring in the ledge right dead center of that hill, isn't there? Yeah, the highway guys are trying to figure that one out. That's one issue. But the other issue is a stream that crosses there. Constant washouts. Yeah. And a $120,000 estimate that when was, a, was an early that. preliminary estimate that right. never went to engineering or anything. You but. So, you but spent is, a lot of money to get that up yeah, there. Yeah, the, the house permits that they applied for were 6,000 square foot, finished square foot homes. They were meg, mega mansions, they used to call them back in 2008 or whatever. Right. McMansions. I don't know if that would happen again. These housing materials are just wicked expensive, even for a 2,000 square foot house. But anyway, that's kind of the, I, that's where it sits. It's sitting with a few state permits need, needing to be amended and a question on the road. So uh, the first step, I think, if there was any interest in the select board, would be confirming the interest with the property owners past Fontaine, because Fontaine starts the, the hill. Yeah, that's where you start. And that's the part of the upgrade. And then maybe an update of the engineering work to see if we're really still talking about 120. Well, I bet you can't fix that road. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't think that even comes I close. Best, I think if the developers want to sell, <coughs> sell land up there, it would be a for them to. They're supposed to bring up the class from class three to class four. They're supposed to bring it up themselves. That's what, that was the concern. That was one of the one of the subdivision yeah. conditions, but not the first one because they had misinformation. So they basically bought a lot, maybe some of them, with the understanding that the town would be upgrading. Well, if I remember right, it was, and I don't want to stir no things up here, but wasn't it uh, wasn't it listed at the real estate sale that that wasn't class three? If I remember right, the permits say that, so I don't. Yeah. You know, that was, they did really, they were doing really quick. I mean, 2005 to 2006, yeah. it was subdivided, marketed, and had house permits. So they were don't, trying to. Yeah, don't quote me on that, but I can remember they were arguing when something said class three, maybe it was the, the permits. <coughs> yeah. So it, 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 we stopped with a cost share concept, but we never finished any kind of formal agreement last four or five years ago. So. If the neighbors all came in with a letter saying we're all on board, we'll cost share, is that would that get your interest? Or you're not interested if they expect the taxpayers to pay 100%? Right. Have to be blamed. Yeah, so, yeah, we're certainly not going to pay 100%, but it, uh, again, if the, <clears throat> and you've got, then you've got another group of lots. I mean, there's, there's the potential for some nice high-end housing up mm -hmm. there. 
you know, 20 Alistairs would be all right. <laughs> you know, so, so, so if we can do something to help encourage that, but then it is also would, would be, again, because, again, those sorts of places are just so, um, you know, with the other development as well, it would seem to me it would make sense if we could get anybody that's interested, plus, I think, the Planning Commission. <coughs> you know, because folks are going to have to come in to get permits for a variety of things. So if we could do it with <coughs> one group meeting to say, okay, here's the situation up there. What's the interest of the property owners? Um, and to at least start some conversation. And if enough property owners aren't interested, well, that's, that's okay, too. Yeah, I, know. I think Cor Corey participated, Hathaway, at the very end, and he was sort of implying he liked it the way it was. Yeah. But he's, he's been up there for so long on his own, he's pretty used to it. Um, what we have never gotten, I don't believe, is, a, is the answer to your question. What is, this, what is the interest of everybody up there? Right. So that's something that we could we could ask. Yeah, we could ask that question of the 15 or 16 lot owners and see what we get. Yeah, we could have a meeting all together and see. Yeah, well, and we can just start by sending them a letter and saying, you know, periodically there's interest where. Every year since I've been here, somebody from somewhere asks about that section of road from four right. to three. Is that going to happen? <coughs> Try. We have engineering work. We have a preliminary estimate, but we have no commitment yeah, on the cost. Right. right. So see. They're, they're the ones with the lots with no road. We <laughs> seem to have well, encountered the same before. If somebody could before. afford to do it totally on their own, and they would be potentially okay on a class four, they have a legal lot. It's just the right. they need to go to a bank and start to sell the property to somebody else. That's the well. But then we know from earlier. Then you get the whole fire truck routine and mm -hmm. everything else. <clears throat> so let's let's yeah. start by just getting a list and sending a letter to the property well, owners and see if they're interested in. I think I only talked to one person who emailed, and I could email that person back and try to confirm if he's talking for himself, okay, thinking yeah. that everybody else wanted it, or if they really did have some kind of meeting and all eight property owners are on and are he's representing them. I don't that that right. I'm not clear. Okay, yet. sure. Let's start. But there. if there's eight people that want us to talk about it, then we would loop in the other eight property owners up there and have a have a have yeah. a little memo that goes out. And See if anybody's interested in meeting or something. So we can just do a little more re outreach. Yeah. Okay. See what we get back. Okay. Go back and forth like this. Um. Okay. Road name. Purchase orders. No. No purchase orders. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> You want to do purchase orders? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Purchase orders. Here's a. <coughs> 14, 15, and 16 pages in your pack. What's the first one, the fuel? I was gonna I was say, the yes. great thing about these first two is you're like, Diesel so fuel. what yep. what, are we, what are we buying? <laughs> yeah, the better I'm buying because it's going up. Yeah, yeah it sure sounds like it. It's yeah. a bulk tank purchase as needed for, you know, fifteen, seventeen thousand dollars of delivery. We still gonna get it that price? 203 was a good price, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, it's gonna be here in a week, so. I'll yeah, bet. exactly, that's. <laughs> the way it's good stop looking. Watching, stop watching the national news. Oh, man. It's a bummer. Huh. It is. <laughs> now, is this, they've already bought this, or this is what they want to pay on it? These are all bulk purchases for the total line item for the year. That they've already bought. Well, they'll, they'll, it's in your orders today for the first one for the diesel fuel, but the rest of them are winter salt isn't bought yet, and the brine mixer is not bought yet. So the, there's one that's sort of in process tonight for the Guests for the diesel. Okay, now yeah. I want to talk about that brine mixer. Lock that one in. Okay, well let's let's 
get the ones we're doing here. Well, it affects this. Yeah, this is the, the fuel oil? No. It's okay. <laughs> no. Salt. Okay. <clears throat> so are you okay <clears throat> with, the, with the fuel oil? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. We can, let's, let's, let's talk okay. about them like, how, if they all want to go together. You can have one motion if you want to just okay. skip out to the brine now. Okay, well, there's, there's a new proposal. The salt, okay, the brine. Okay, Mark Branch talked to me today. Um, and, and what it is, St. Albans, he talked to you on it. We'll say that. Yeah, and he's, he's, talk, he's talked yes. to all of us. So I okay. Have their big thing, and they came to me <coughs> six or seven times in this conversation, that he talked to a person that worked for the state that's in the knowledge here, said they would save 30% of their salt on the, uh, if they used that brine and wetted it before they put it onto the rope. Well, that's a good saving, 30% of, right. of the salt. Now, I'm not saying 30%. 10% is good. I'm not right. saying 30% of the money, 30% of the tonnage. Right. Because we don't right. know what it is. <clears throat> yes. We don't know what the winner's going to bring. Instead of putting, because 30% of $90,000 is $30,000, right? Correct. Well, the right. Balance, right. Good okay. Now. Yeah. Okay. So, so. I'm just trying to figure out what you're trying to trip me into here. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, if they, I've been sitting next to you too long, Dave. Okay, well, yeah. If they, want the tax, <laughs> if they want the taxpayers to spend another $15,000 to save $30,000, why would you pass a $90,000 budget if they're going to save $30,000? Because you don't know what the winner's going to be like, so you don't know what they're going to save. Well, you've got to save something. You, you give them the same thing. My suggestion is, let's look at the benefit of the Dell. Let's cut this salt budget 15%, which they did last year anyways. They were under budget last year anyways. Yeah, I think we were the only town in the state right. that they managed to So they let's managed cut to this 15%. Thinking they're going to save, if they do this, they're going to save 30% on, on the salt brine. <clears throat> okay, you don't, let's see, we have the money, we don't need, we don't need to cut it. What happens if it works is there's money at the end of the year. But you spend another $15,000 on top of your 90000 If you consulted this road last year for $90,000, <coughs> Right. Well, but and you're going to do it this, this year for ninety thousand dollars plus another fifteen thousand dollars. It's a fifteen thousand dollar increase. But this is not to exceed. Do we buy it all at once? It don't no. make a difference. You buy it all at once. No, it, no it, but that's why. So he's got. He can spend <coughs> that too. If he's not spending the money through the year, it 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 will not be spent. <laughs> so what? What? Put it on the taxpayer. <coughs> Well, you're not. We well, first, first of all, the taxpayers have, have. We already have the budget, so that they, they it's already spent, if you will. Okay, they've already authorized spending that amount of money. We aren't going back and saying give us any more money. Okay, we're working within the budget that they've given us. Okay, so, so we're not, we're not laying anything on top of them. I understand what you're saying. So okay. what what's the benefit of buying this thing? Because hopefully you're going to get to the end of the season and you're going to have leftover money. And that and that would cover it. And you will in the future. You would then need lower salt budgets. I mean, it's the same thing when we when you put the you know the computers for the salt. You don't. We they know when you put them in. Yeah. You, and, and, and here's what you say. And, and you say you think you're going to save it, but again, you got no idea what the weather's going to be. Maybe we'll have a wonderful winter and. You know, they only need to spend forty thousand dollars on salt. Period. Whether you changed anything or not. Like the way you think. Lower better. Yeah, I, I, lower winner. Yeah. No, right. I think I, I. I'm trying to. And Mark and I have had this conversation before because it it happens with salt. It happens with uh, paving. It happens with uh, small road projects. Mm -hmm. In the past, we would budget based on the expense expense history right and we try to 
you know, yeah, of course, when we have these up and downs on a lot of wet weather, it's crazy, but you can all, that's all the information you know. So at the end of the year, sometimes you have more or less, but you have to take that with a grain of salt, so to speak, and say, mm. hey, mm. that was a wicked hot winter. Next winter could be opposite. Right. We try to split the difference there. I think what Dave is saying is what, kind of how I look at paving too. We have a paving program. We have a winter salt maintenance program. And you have $90,000 for winter salt treatment or winter treatment or materials or whatever. If you want to take 15,000 and, and tell us you're going to do 30% savings, you're, you're, we want you to get to that 90,000, even though you're only spent 75 because of your savings. And you're going to backfill that with 15,000 of winter maintenance salt equipment. So I think that's what Dave is trying to trying to say is that if you have the 90,000 for this winter salt thing and you can get it done a better way, we're not giving you 105. Exactly. We're giving you 90 to figure out how, how to spend that better. Yeah, that's right. And have it maybe better roads. Maybe this new method is improving the safety of the roads on top of not costing any more than 90,000. And the same thing happened with paving. When we did center road and there's no money for a patch pave of $50,000, it comes out of the paving program and we're trying to right, figure out how right, to get through the program. year. Right. It's not the four <clears throat> inches of pavement on every mile, which is the classic way to look at paving. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different. And I think we have enough in each of those programs, if you want to call it, to do this kind of efficiency. And it's almost an environmental upgrade if the salt is used for the road and doesn't splash into the ditches and you have to keep adding salt. That's what happens now. Well, and you, and you don't have the chemical additives in it as well. No, it's just water and salt right. instead of any new chemicals. So I think there's, a, there's multiple benefits. Some of them you'll see right. money with, some of them you won't. Mm -hmm. Right. But if the board wants to see 90000 as the goal, it's still a goal. Every budget's a goal. I, I don't know what to do about the 30%. Do you believe it? Or you have to prove it. I think you have to prove it. Does the board have faith in that 30% or even 15% will cover the cost of this new equipment? That's a, that's a, a leap, but not a leap of faith, but it's something that's new to us. So we don't have that experience to say, oh, this works. Well, that's right. So there's the a little bit. Who doesn't of, have the experience either? Can I ask a question. What are they going to mix with the salt burn? Because water. Huh? Water. I know, but after 32 degrees, you have to mix an additive in there, so that doesn't turn into a glare sheet of ice. Sheet freeze. Well, that's all I asked Mark when he was telling me about that. I said, well, "What are you going to build for storage?" And he said, "Nothing." He said, "The tank can stay right outside." I said, even at, at, at sub-zero weather, and they, he said that when, when water and salt won't freeze. They have to make some sort of additive. I don't, yeah, I don't know what the percentage is. Right. If, if the temperature is below zero, your pump is going to freeze up. Right. Because well, the pump's inside, he said. This tank's heated, outside, heated, pump's heated inside. Heated. Tank's outside, pump's heated inside. So the water will be warmer than 32 with it. All right. So that's fine. So you won't have a problem there. But if you got a day that it's 15 degrees out, and you go out there and spray that salt brine and salt on, you're going to have an ice skating rink. Well, apparently you don't. And I'm just, these guys have been working on this for a year and a half and working well, with other work towns that have done highway, it. Right. And so, I used it. Yeah. Um, anything well, below 32 degrees, we had to mix an additive. There's your, there's your answer right there. And I mean, Brian, <coughs> he's lived it. Because I, I worked for AOT for 14 years. Um, and yes, it cut down on the salt, but you also have expenses and whatever material <coughs> additives that you're going to put into it. Um, for years, they use, they call it ice begone. And that's when everybody started complaining that the salt brine was sticking to their cars. Right. Oh. Just like when they had the accident over there by Norman Breeze buses. I watched that that night. I watched that that night. Yeah. And it said this blacktop's turning to ice, man. Yeah. And you know what they were using that night. Mm -hmm. I do. And then all of a sudden, the town of Morristown had to go and sand all the roads for them. <coughs> That's my only question right. to you guys, because... Um, we used to have a chart on the wall 
in the in the mixing room, and you, after 32 degrees, you had to put like five percent mixture into it, and then as the temperatures went colder, you had to even put more additive into it. Ice be gone well, or, or well, or do you have to put more? Yeah, yeah I was gonna say, Chloe, you have to put more salt into it because at a certain point, I mean, ocean. <coughs> Seems to stay it, fairly liquid. Right. You know, <coughs> has the state got it right yet, Brad? Look at his head. Well, but there's, but the, well, but we, we got a state guy too who spent years on it. So you know, you got. <coughs> um, why Why don't we get Mark on the phone and he can answer these questions? You got, you got, you got my new. Let me see what I got. Yeah, you, did you have his number? Uh, no, you, you don't. <coughs> okay. Excuse <coughs> me. But what I understand this equipment has probably had had a million gallons of, of fluid through it already. You got seven three zero two seven two nine. You want to talk to Mark? Yeah. Yeah. I was just I was just texting to see if he had time for a phone call. He said yes. So whoever wants to dial him up. <coughs> It's the board. How are you? <clears throat> okay, let me see. What? <laughs> so here, here are the questions. So when it hits, when it's 20 degrees, doesn't it just turn to an ice skating rink? No. The state, the state used to say that the state's gone away from all additives in their salt pond. The state will not put nothing in their salt pond as of this year. This year, or last year, I'm not sure what the year was. State's gone 100% salt pond. When we get low temperatures, we're doing the same thing we've always have done. We've always added chloride in with our salt. My truck is 90, 90% set up. I got a wire harness I got to put in because of that. Because when we did our salt pond, or we did our chloride, we didn't have any way to calculate how much chloride we're putting in. So when we get low temperatures, we're going to add chloride to it. The state has gone away from ice to gone. They've gone away from the blasts, everything. The state's gone. They did their group last year, I, I guess, where they were talking. And with complaints of corrosion on vehicles, the state has gone away from all additives. They're 100% salt right now. Why, why did they go away from it? Why did they go away from it? They went away from the additives because of all the complaints about vehicle problems and rust and whatever. I mean, you know, talk to Eric Williams, talk to him, you know, I've talked to all my local mechanics too. Paul saw flying fast, killed the cars. And I think when the state came into the problem, the other problem the state came into the problem, they never, ever, as far as I know, uh, have educated the public on what they're doing with it. Salt brine is what we've drove in. Every time I've got splashes off your tires of salt brine. We've made it for years. It takes longer for us to make it. But every vehicle on high park down roads has been running salt brine for years. When they're splashing off your tires, that's 100% salt brine because we don't have no additives. When we get low temperatures for past practice for years with Kenny or whoever, I mean, we've always added chloride to it. With you know, our surrounding towns have done the same thing, it's the only way we get it work. I usually, for center towns that will go quicker, I will go because we don't have the traffic flow and it's cold, cold, then I'll let them run it because there's traction. But if I see sun coming out, if I can just bear a little spot up with chloride, look next to my saw, then it opens up a little so we can, you know, it'll open up and we just fix the, the sun that is pretty healthy. Like I said, that's not done again. Use the sun, that's free. Salt brine, my main thing with salt brine is, with my, and it's with everything. If I went out and salted at 20 degrees and I know it's going to drop like a rock, well, it's going to freeze over. So we got to use our heads. Same thing with salt brine, we got to use our heads. 
Mr. Nelson, there's something for every situation. And I'm the first one to tell you that. The floor is not for every situation. Rock shops is not for every situation. We've got to use our heads and play the game up. And every one of us, I don't care who it is, anybody from the state, me, or Roland with Morseville, or whoever, we're all going to mess up. We all got to go back one storm or the other and hit it again because we didn't put enough salt down the first storm, the first time around. Because it's, it does get tricky. And I'm sure Roland can tell you that. We try our best. There's times that it comes back to bite us and we got to go back around and hit it again. But, as far as the state going away from salt, they're not going away from it. And I do know they've gone away from all additives. As of this year, there will be no additives in the salt area. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you get this. That's what I've been saying? No, but I have Meyer, when I talked to you today, you, you, you made the statement that a gentleman, I won't mention no name, a gentleman from the state you've been talking to that's in the know said you could save 30% on the assault. Uh, yep. Budget. Now I'm not talking, I'm not talking dollars and cents. I'm talking tonnage. Yep. So with that being said, thirty percent of your ninety thousand uh, dollar salt budget is thirty thousand dollars, and I I think that's quite a jump. But I, I wouldn't want to go in there and hold you to it because we don't know what the winter's going to bring. Right. Now, I'll you that today. Okay. Now, okay. Now, well, let me finish. Now for the the taxpayers, if we as a board voted in your $15,000, can we take it off that $90,000 SALT budget? And that's only, a first, that's only a 15 percent cut, not a 30 percent cut. The first year, I'm going to say I would not like that. Only reason I'm saying that for is because if it didn't work, uh, I, and I've heard this from multiple people, one guy from the state was very, very well known and he knows his stuff and I'm not, I don't want to bash him. I've had multiple people from the state go tell me the same thing. My only fear is I'd rather take it out of my small equipment fund to be honest with you because I don't want to go back and be like we ran over stock budget. If we go over, we go over, we're going to have to find the money. I don't want that to happen. Honestly, I have not I like my role about more on my salt budget. I like my role of trying to decrease it, decrease it, decrease it. Because that's one of my main goals. And it's a very expensive part of the high cost is our salt budget. Mm -hmm. So anywhere we can save, I want to save. Do I feel comfortable the first year before I've seen it myself? No, but I don't think anybody can feel comfortable. You know, if you did an upgrade to your health, would you want to cut your fuel budget? You know, 30% without seeing it the first year? That's my only. I just want the security behind me. Do I feel it's going to work? I feel very strongly it's going to work, but I don't want to go back to taxpayers and be like, you know, we didn't save quite this much, but we saved 12%, not 30%. Well, do I feel it's going to work? I do. Do I feel we got some kinks that are going to work out of it? I do. Have, have we got any. Do I feel like we're going to have it nailed down? I do. Have we got any salt budget numbers for this year? I should be right. Quick time. That's my 90,000. I have done, we should have it, we're supposed to have it by the end of this week. I have not seen it. I heard to the great volume that it was going up $10. Which it went up $10 last year, so I haven't heard that. I believe that's going to happen. That's 20 bucks in two years. I, know, I think it was $11 last year, I think, if I remember correctly. Because I lost over 100 tons of salt. That's over 100 tons last year. We still came in under budget. So I, you know, I now, now what's, what's St. Albans, you said that St. Albans is the one that's selling this, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. They're, they're going to the pre-mix, as you said, right? They're going to pre-mix because they had a bunch of guys that they had employed, like to the parks and recreation or whatever, they put plow trucks. They want a year-round work. They took the so we don't so know. They went to plow trucks. We don't know how much the pre-mix is. Um, going to be a ton. I know it was like... I know last year it was quite a bit more than my regular White Rock Salt. You actually had a deal on it as well. Yeah, we... It was the first year they were promoting it. I know it was very cheap last year, but it was still quite a spike over our regular Rock Salt that we used. I can 
tell you what, it's a lot that's less. Not, it's a lot less easy. work with a pre saw. But this really not going to be that much work, honestly. It's really not. You know, this thing does four thousand gallons an hour. It's really not going to be. Once you dump your salt in, you know, it's just like a whirlpool. It's just going, 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 going. So the guys can grease the cup while this thing is mixing. It's not like you got to babysit the uh, first couple times. I guess I definitely will babysit if you want to make sure I'm going to go Did you use that? that? Did you use that pre salt last year, Mark? I did not use that pre salt last year because I didn't want to pay the more money for it. And I thought my roads were safe as they were. All I'm looking at is reducing my sodium levels on my roadsides and trying to reduce our salt budget itself. But so far, we've done pretty good with for what we you know, we we're <coughs> down, huh? we you know, all this together. We made some very smart investments. You know, we've saved quite a bit of salt, I feel, you know, if you look back through the history and look at my storm for the last few, last few years, the prior years, we have modern technology in our trucks. We've done, I thought, we've done a very good job on our salt savings. You know, we haven't come after more salt. We, you know, it's cutting our salt money, our budget is not the same, but the salt price is going up, so my tonnage for what we use it for a year has dropped, and we're still staying within our budget. You know, everything we've done has paid itself off. All the investments the select board has agreed to so far have paid themselves off. We haven't steered the sun board wrong yet, and that's why I really hope that you guys stand behind me on this because we have not steered you guys wrong yet. I think I, I, I feel we have the proof to show you guys that we haven't steered you wrong. <coughs> what do you keep putting yet in there for? But what? Yeah. <laughs> you said, uh, you, said uh, you haven't steered us wrong yet. Well, yeah, and I hope I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not swearing to nothing. I'm not putting my name on nothing. I'm just saying we're trying to do the best we can. And I'm telling you. Well, the thing is, Mark. Mark and I went to a UVM conference, and it's pretty much gone. It's been proved. They've got test wells, and I can put you in contact with people who've got test wells in the roads that show you <clears> their <throat> sodium levels are quick and hot. They put salt brine on and reduce their salt your salt staying in a row, they've yeah. dropped their sodium levels. 93 hooks it, if anybody's familiar with it. They've lowered the sodium levels, adding lanes. That's a lot of black talk. And that's a lot of cracking. So it's all just not The thing I'm thinking of, Mark, here, is that you ain't got no complaints over the last five years since I've been on the board about the black top. I don't always get complaints, though, when people are what they have, but when I lower the price of what we're paying for salt, yeah. we'll get more compliments. I'm not worried about complaints. You know, I'll deal with complaints, I'll deal with compliments. It's going to be educational for sure. Nine people out of ten people you're talking to don't know what salt going is. It's got a bad name. They don't know what it is. And we are and, very and, fortunate and, in High Park, we have somebody very familiar with salt going that can help us through this. He started for years, he was an advocate for the state of Vermont when he started it. He's very familiar with it. I, I'm telling you, I've done, I've done my homework for two years and I'm not kicking. I've talked to a lot of state goes. And I'm telling you what, today, I'll tell you, because it is quite special sometimes. You know, I, I, I look at when I do my four lines, it's kind of the same idea. My salt is in a pop in the middle of the road. It's not off to the side, it's not jumping to shoulder to shoulder. It's in the middle of the road. Continue to work because it's in the middle of where it's supposed to be. Yeah, the income. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. the only thing that that I I'm, I agree with you with the Brian there is I know not that much about it, but everybody, like you said, you talk to the experts and stuff, and and it's going to do that. But the purpose of my call, purpose of my question was. If we ask the taxpayers to give us fifteen thousand dollars, and all these experts are telling us it's going to cut the budget thirty percent, why keep the budget? Why shouldn't have a problem? Then why should we keep the budget ninety percent? Why, why, why can't we cut it fifteen percent? Anything I do for the first year, I want to keep it the same to make sure that I know I proved to myself that they were right. Well, you know, 
Well, and you can, then the issue just becomes. Okay, I think I think Mark part of the just question was when it's really cold, what happens, and that's the chloride is the answer to that. Where uh, and now we're just figuring out where where do we take the money. That's all. Right. Well, <laughs> anybody? Right. Got, yeah. You know, I'm not saying we'll pay it off the first year. Like you guarantee the second, third year, we're we'll definitely pay it off, and then it'll be. I can don't guarantee that. I'm not. I don't want to put words in my mouth or the select board's mouth. That, hey, we're going to do this within one year because we do it and see what we're going to do. I, I don't want to put any of us under the fire. Like you said, well, we said it with an assumption. I talked to a lot of people within the state, and I talked to people in Morfield Garage. I talked to people, I talked to a bunch of guys in the team, uh, St. Albany's Garage. I talked to friends of mine, North Coast State. Everybody's out there. They could not match the spread without self-line. Couldn't ever, ever match it going away from you. Okay. But I, I will not say anything. How much we're going to save, right. Right, right. right. Okay. To put anybody under the gun. Okay. All right, we'll put, <coughs> we won't put you under the gun. We'll put ourselves under the gun. How's that? Well, no, I don't okay. want to put under the gun. <laughs> you got, got any more questions for Mark? We're good? You get, yeah, I think, okay. All right, Mark, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, yep, bye-bye. Bye. That was yours, right? Okay. So there was, I don't know if you heard what he was saying in the beginning about his the funding sources. Just want to be clear about right. that. So he said he would prefer the small equipment purchases, which has $10,000, to be used for this equipment, which is $5,000 short. Which, if he's at all successful on reducing the ninety thousand, he should be able right. to get the five thousand. I was going to say, why don't we? Do, why right. don't you were thinking of reducing this to what? Fifteen, fifteen, uh, fifteen thousand. You, you, you were going to do the whole thing. He wants to take it no, out. No, 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 no. The whole thing would be thirty thousand. Right. Okay. I'm saying that, that thirty percent. I'm saying fifteen percent would be fifteen thousand. If we, if we, if we use his small purchase equipment. Which really looking at the cost of equipment, that is small purchase. And do it, then we just and, take that down and, to and eighty five. He, he, and he was under budget last year, so he didn't spend his whole ninety thousand dollars last year, right? But uh, barely. That's yeah, hundreds it was like of dollars. 80, yeah. <laughs> it was hundreds of dollars. It was eighty nine seven fifty or something. Yeah, it was, so it wasn't yeah. <laughs> he 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 wasn't way under. So what, what so, so take do the do the small and and then just take All five I out say of it. Is, that I know a lot of towns have tried this. And I know a lot of towns have gone back to the way it's done now with the sump. I can throw a snow in there, I can throw a waterberry in there, I can throw a lot of towns in there. And I know that they've gone back with the sump. Does it warrant somebody doing some more No, these guys, these guys have. These guys have spent a year and a half coming up with this stuff. They've yeah, gone they to conferences. Did. They've done the whole thing. Yeah, they, they spent a year and a half coming up with something they want. Well, I don't know. I don't know that they started out wanting it. Is they're trying to figure out what's the best thing to do. Well, and I yeah. think it. I think it. it but were those some with additives? Though? Is that his, Is that older history with additives and all that? Because there was years. You know that that I used like that last year. brown that, stuff that, and that all that. Pre salt that they were mixing right from yeah. the barracks yeah. and trucking in. I can't remember it was only like $15, $16 more a ton, if I remember right. And it was all mixed. It was all pre-wet. And they have a formula. And that stuff was sticking to the roads. Unbelievable. And then if you got a storm like we did last year, the next day or the day after, that's, you could see that salt still working. 
and I knew it was there. You know, and I've, I, a couple times I was saying, somebody salt this? Can't be, we need salt this yet. You know? <coughs> and it didn't go very far. Huh? And, it, and it held in there for a couple days. But if, if he thinks he can do it, more power to it. Now look right at the camera and tell him, more power to it. Yeah, well, I, you know? <clears throat> but I think if, but, we use the, if we use the small budget and drop that to 85, that's taken some out of it. I mean, it's really know, hard. It's, it's really hard to drop it. I mean, I know what you're saying, but he's not going to have. He's they're going to be playing with this, and I don't care if there's been a guy that's worked for the state for 30 years. The state is still playing with it. Well, and that's why he says why he'd prefer not. He'd prefer to take it out of his small <laughs> and, operating and, equipment and and, and I've and talked squeeze to people some that other things. work from the state too, and and they said. Here we are with millions of dollars invested. We better figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right. I'm trying to find, we're in a history of making a decision. So he's using information that's current. And right. you and Brad are using five, 10 year old stuff, which they're not doing anymore. This is the first winter that they've used salt. Brian only is what Mark was saying. They've always come in winners the first year. Yeah, they do it. they've been trying all these other things, which were failures, which makes it hard to mix up the two. Even pre-wetting was a fail. Yeah, yeah, I don't. It even work. It sounds like everybody's every. At least everybody's looking for the perfect solution, yeah, and nobody's found it. Right. Yet. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. you know that's what that's what it is. I will you know? say you will see some savings in your tonnage of salt by the salt run. My only question was how much money are you going to spend in additives because 32 degrees and lower, you've got to add yeah, 20, well, but it's yeah, always 28, good. 28 for salt brine, but if he adds the chloride, you get down a little bit colder. And then he said, right. for very cold, you're going to have to stop doing it. I mean, yeah. chloride. At some point, you stop and you go back to the yeah. rock. Yeah, you go back to the rocks, right. I right. mean, it, it doesn't. Zero that starts right. knocking off. How expensive chloride? Not very expensive. I, if you. I think it's 93 cents a gallon delivered in our tanks, but I know they charge you with, uh, it's not <coughs> a little over an hour for the winter chloride. The only thing I'll suggest is when they put the pumps on the trucks for the burn systems, make sure they let them know that they're gonna be running chloride in it because if they put a cheap pump on, on it to pump that off into the, you're going to have major problems. Yeah, we know. I, uh, well, you know, I always so had two or three on the shelf. Because that was one of the biggest things that we had problems with with the state is the brine pumps on the trucks messing up hmm. there. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'd bless them, let them try it. They want them. Yeah, we'll try it and see what happens. And hopefully it saves a lot of money. Take it out of. Again, and I think Mark's right. You know, the first year might not save a lot. Right. But the next two or three years, you're definitely gonna help. Yeah, you, know, you figure you're it out. Automatically gonna save money for for the tonnage of salt. You know, because you're not gonna be putting that much salt down versus what he is now. Well, and you know. And looking further out, I've, it's interesting. I've been, with you look at all the stormwater runoff stuff that they tell us now, and, and Mark was talking about, you know, they found the difference in testing the wells by the side of the road. That ultimately isn't going to come down and it's, you know, they're, they're going to make us go this direction. Because, they, because again, you're looking at the quality of the runoff. And so they want as little salt running off as possible, and this is obviously a better way to do it. I can't, I just, I'm sort of waiting for that shoe to fall. And then they'll give us all ice skates or something. I don't know. Well, I'd make a motion we go ahead and try it. <clears throat> okay, how do you, well, let's see. Let me, let me have a second and then we'll figure out how we want to do the money. I'll, I'll, I'll think about the damn stuff, so. <laughs> I'll second it. <laughs> Now, it's, it's the, again, Mark would prefer that we take it out of the, uh, you know, out of the small equipment stuff. And 
he find the other missing money someplace in his, again, when you look at his whole budget? Do yeah, you, I'll go along with that. Okay, or do, Dave, you feel strongly you want to take some out of the, out of the SALT budget? I'd rather see him take 80,000, put in 80,000 here, mm. cut this 10, let them keep 5,000 in their small equipment budget. We're only talking, we're only into this year, three months. What's going to happen if they need something? Yeah. A whole variety of things will happen. Right. And if he needs more salt, I mean, we're going to give him the money. If he emerges, he'll have an emergency meeting on yeah. salt. And, 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 we'll, and he'll get the yeah, money. Yeah, I'll go on yeah. with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that works all right. Money. I mean, it's not as though, oh, I need more salt, right. and we're going to say, too bad. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you burn through your budget. Too that bad. Better, it's a better deal for him. Yes. Yeah. Budget, okay. I yeah. can't say we're going to spend money to save money, but keep the same budget. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we didn't know. We didn't know any difference when we put the uh, the other things on the truck yeah, stuff, the and they worked on, out right. the computers. Yeah. yeah. And that yeah, came and out. out. You know, we took yeah. a chance, and it worked. It's not that, finally, like you said, it's not that. If we, I mean, I think he's. Salt, I yeah. think he spent a lot of time. He spent a lot of time on this. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I don't think he just jumped into it. Oh, no, 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 I no. No, no, it's not that. We just wanted to have yeah, the I mean, So, so I you got it, Ron? I have the 10,000 from the 90. Yep. And then the, he's got 8,000 left. He has 3,000, uh, $1,000 a truck to set up the three trucks. That's 3,000 that could come out of the heavy equipment repair lines if mm -hmm. you yeah. want to take them 5, per truck. 5,000. Yeah. So. And then 5,000 is what? Small equipment. Small equipment. Yeah. So leave some money for the year. Right. That way you leave some money yeah. in there in case right. something happens. Right. I'll suck it out yeah. now. Okay. I'm going to run and get it all down here. <clears throat> okay. There we go. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. <clears throat> so that that's good. Have we taken care of the fuel too? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're taking care of the fuel. Yeah. yeah. We're yeah. That was all three of them. Okay. Yeah. yeah I have to amend the motion to include the other two okay. purchase orders for their budget amount. Uh, okay. Let me see. Wait a minute. Here. On to the next. All right. Wait. Okay. No. Don't run good price. You're getting ahead of yourself there. I am. I know. I'm. All, I'm so oh, excited. Okay. Purchase or okay. We got the purchase or. Oh, we got to no, do the town listers. Town listers. We get those listers. Yikes. Oh, we got to do the firework permit. <coughs> get in trouble now. Okay. Oh, this is really close. What's the? Yes, we have to the town. Is it in here? Oh, okay. Wait a minute. I saw it someplace. What page is that thing on? I can't even find it. Who is there it for? we go. Okay. Twenty-one. Yeah, twenty-one. <laughs> Here's the original firm signature on the right column. Right. <laughs> There's only three places. Yeah, only need three. His first, first three are in. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll Here's a mission. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, is this on will. the uh, Denny Hill Road, or is this on the? Inspection or addition. There's an, I don't, I don't remember which address. Coming at you. Roger, got it. Okay, Roger, got it. 960. Their house is on Ten Hill Road, but they also own that house there on the This is their homestead. It was a homestead change. They forgot to. So, so yeah, where, they old, yeah. where, where they own? Like where they own? Where do they live? Tenny Hill Road. Tenny Hill Road. Yeah. Tenny Hill Road. Yeah, Tenny Hill. I believe that's right. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Parcel code. I could plug it in. Not that. I, I just was curious. Twenty three is gonna sign. We can put a fourth one in. We don't want them to feel left out down there. Okay. 
It's all set if there's three on there. Roll it. Yeah, but we're going for four. Are you put on four? We're going for four. Oh, okay, squeeze it in there. No, you got to say it. Sign it. You said it. Come on, we don't want you feeling left out down there, Roy. I'm not. <laughs> we, um, is there a motion to approve and all that? We okay. had a lot of admission errors this year. We? Send that down. Need to do a motion to approve or accept? I guess to accept. Make a motion to approve the um, mission error. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Uh, Oops. minutes. See, they got the brush cut up there to the uh, range hall. Yep. Yeah. yeah as far as I know, it's it. all gone. What? It was there today. What's that? Should be gone this week. Yeah, I thought the exactly. American they were going to send the chipper up today. Yeah, you got some sheriff. Oh, okay. Some sheriff help because they were in the road. They ran Route 100 for a little bit, so they had sheriff. Yeah, he was up there running radar today. Yep. Right. Yeah. Sets right in plain sight. Yeah, the roof's being done as we speak. It's in process. Yeah, I think they got a few pieces of steel on it. They could put 10 pieces of steel with all the work that Brian did up there. Maybe 12, I don't know. <laughs> they aren't going very fast. <laughs> but, you know, we didn't hire for speed. $41,000, however long it takes. Huh? Cool, cool. There's an open house this Sunday if anybody That's what wants I mean, to go. Yeah. If anybody wants to hang out, they get chili or chili contest oh, yeah, or something up there. Yeah. Is it chili contest? Grange Hall, North Hyde Park on Sunday at noon. Probably half walk away, but the only question I got on the August nineteenth right now yeah. is the Main Street stop sign. Yep. It says uh, uh, the board would like to see a sketch and then discuss it next meeting. Did not get that. Can we table that part to the next meeting? Well, that was the plan for the last meeting. We didn't get it for this meeting, so that that could be yeah. So just our yeah, so that we didn't get it. So it but on. we can mention it tonight to make sure we get it for your next for the meeting. next yeah. meeting, yeah. right? Yeah, that's that's. I don't know what happened there. I know we had the uh, request to summit to get it in, but. Well, actually, we saw it right there. Yeah, it's Du Bois team. We saw it. it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Because I saw that. Oh, that was another meeting. Okay, yeah, right. All right, they'll get that to us. All right. You weren't there for that meeting, were you, really? The third? No. Yeah? No, no, absent, really. No. I well, can't do that. So you can't vote that one. <coughs> so, really can't vote. I, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes for September 3rd, the special right, special meetings, meeting, right? September 3rd, that we discussed the change hall, and also the August 19th meeting. I'll second that. Okay. <coughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Well, we'll just do the third, yeah. We're okay. He can abstain from the third. Yeah, he can. You, that's right. He can abstain from the third and vote yes on the 19th. Right. We can have an abstention. All right. Okay.
I don't know how to do it, but Ken went for surgery at 445. Okay, thanks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And he's probably, that's all we know, huh? Tell <laughs> Don, don't send me no more messages because he's going to smack her new world. <laughs> she knew better than send it to me. <laughs> Get it, I got okay. another white one. You trained her. Yeah, uh, that's my writing, but yeah. Oh, I thought that was the alley. I do, we do, we talk about you all day with that, so. <laughs> <laughs> you really so like me getting into that, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's too late, Roger. I gave up. Yeah, <laughs> you tried. You almost oh, had me yeah. convinced one. Eventually, it's going to be really easy, but raise your hand again. Because when I, I, oh, when yeah. I first so, died, I tried. Head to granddaughter. It's like I'm coming yeah. in, in yeah. First, you know, it's the first time they left. I couldn't like, get it. <laughs> Boy, I did appreciate, but, well, I did appreciate this, this month, the, uh, back in, the invoice stuff. The invoices to review. Yeah, we're, we're, I think we figured it out. So you have two packages. One is a do not sign. Yeah. 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 And Sorry. the other one is just new stuff. Yeah. Sorry. Right. And. The modification to the five hundred dollars or less. Yeah. Like, if that works fine, we'll keep it. It took almost no time to put that together. I thought, yeah, I said it there. Watch. But it was easy to put together compared to every invoice and every attachment. Right. If, if you just pick up the five hundred and more, it went easy to create that email. So. I'm not watching the Red Sox fail. I agree. Oh, yeah. we've given it. We're not. <laughs> just said, no, I'm not no. watching anymore. Well, I, had a a lot of <laughs> I had a question. Uh, I don't know, can't depend which department was this. I don't know if this is all department. On the fly, uh, the oil. Oil change? Oh no, that was something different. It was this right here. Yeah, the frying oil. So the the uh, roller for the the new pavement. Oh, they use the cheap frying oil. Oh, okay. I, I well, I had no idea. I yeah. said, what would they be using? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Did they cook turkey. French fries? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little side thing. Okay, so I so. Are, now, do we select board have to do the fireworks permit? Uh, that's a policy question. Um, Kim normally would approve those, Rick, because they're per, um, right. consumer grade event that somebody's having in their backyard. This one is the first one that she's mm -hmm. seen where they hired North Star Fireworks as a commercial show. Was it old home day? I mean, not the, the, you didn't sign that one. It's related to the school, the home, homecoming day, homecoming day, this Saturday. <coughs> That's what, that's oh, what I mean. doing. Okay. So they'll be right in the backyard here, basically, shooting off the commercial show yep. on Saturday yep. night. And Kim didn't feel comfortable because of the upgrade to commercial level of just approving it without sending it to the board or public notice. No, courtesy called. Did somebody call uh, 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 Landers? Uh, no. No, we didn't. We didn't call any. No. Sorry. No. Nobody's done anything with this because it came yeah. in today. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> so this was just noticed it, to the abutters. North Star has notified the neighbors. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, we haven't gone beyond the adjoining neighbors. That's a that was a question Kim had because the school right. property goes almost all the way to Johnson. Oh, and then you take you're, then you take the right, neighbors there. Sure. You, you know, it's like okay. you'd have to notify half if, of the. If you look at the map. Yeah, we use the school proper, yeah. the, the proper, the building parcel. So we didn't go up and across Cricket Hill. Have to sign. I should, I should probably. Did you guys look at these? I should, yeah, I think you got it ready. We have to. <coughs> should probably give Kirk a call. Get him a cup of coffee in the morning and give him a call. Cool. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. Just. Uh, oh, that, was that all of them? Save the yep. phone. Save the phone. Call. Make a motion to uh, accept the town orders. So move. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. That's where I got that. Okay. Other business and notices. Better connections. That's what the, that. That's where I saw the four-way stop thing that yes. we were looking at. That we'll we'll get here for the next meeting. 
So that's not, so we're going. No, we'll go. Um, <coughs> Okay. How about employees' hats and vests? Oh, I haven't gotten to it. Uh, that was something Allison's been working on. She included some emails with with yep. her embroidery vendor in Johnson, I think. And the highway crew has been asking for hats to have a consistent uniform because they don't have they use whatever hats they want and. Kim and Allison and I will wear vests all winter, basically starting Columbus Day or whatever. And the pr initial proposal was that out of the hundred and twenty dollars or whatever the select board grants in December, that people that wanted to could have the vest done instead of cash. So that was one of you mean the for the Christmas fund. Yeah, Christmas fund? yeah, from ah, that, okay. that money. Okay. <clears throat> not not new money, but just that was allocated money that normally we get a little bit extra in the, right. that one right. paycheck. So the Christmas uh, gift, the Christmas money yeah, the would, would be a vest and a, a hat vest. instead of the Or people could do cash, but it, the, yeah. the time to put in to get the design done and get the vest picked out so it doesn't mm -hmm. pill, it does a little bit of work to do all yeah, that. Yeah, that's stuff. right. Well, the vest, the vest is definitely a thing that you know, the no, vest will look good, actually. No, no, they're talking dress vest, I'm sure, not work vest. You're talking fleece vest? Fleece vest. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. the way it'll work. Not, not orange. Well, okay, okay. Not orange. Okay. <clears throat> no, this is just a black vest with a logo. So then, which, then Allison ran up against the slogan problem because you could just say Hyde Park or it could use the current letterhead image with the cows on it, which people are mixed about or you come up with a Hyde Park you know, like Richmond says Richmond home of the round church you know Hyde Park doesn't really have a slogan per, per se right. oh they don't even have a sign you have we Shire can, Shire can. town of Lamoille County has been mentioned it's in a couple but, books but there's no home of the Green River <laughs> Reservoir you know I don't well they can't but I don't think there's wild enthusiasm for a cow on it well that's our that's our emblem I mean that's our yeah, that was done probably about 10 years ago with a school competition, yes. I think, yeah. and we put it on our letterhead. Yeah. So if it's official... It's on the trucks too, isn't it? No. No, they just they do script writing for Hyde Park. Oh. So there's no logo image at all on the trucks. Highway doesn't want it on their hat. They came up with like a Hyde Park Highway image that they want. So the question is, does the, does the board think there is one? I don't, we never really asked if there's a Hyde Park, I've never asked if there's a Hyde Park slogan or byline, if you call it that, or anything. That is, I don't know. Well, I don't know the Hyde Park logo. The logo we have, it's a square with the, yeah. with the cows and the steeple in the background. But a slogan to go with it, I don't know if anybody was ever thought about that before. So. So it's kind of, a, a lot of towns spend a lot of time on this. Yeah. It's a branding thing. It's sometimes a consultant will come in and all that. <coughs> we were just, Alice and I were just wondering if there was anything ever done before that we're not right. aware of. No. Okay. Not to mind. Couldn't use the town cur the, the courthouse? Uh, well, the well, village, what's the village, do? the village right. does the steeple with their clock, and then they say village of Hyde Park. Um, in the history books, it'll say, you know, Hyde Park, Shire Town, or Lamoille right. County. But that's the extent of anything that we've found so far, other than the logo that's on our envelopes yeah. for the, so. Anyway, that was all she was wondering before she, if she ordered it, should we get like regular black vest with a bright Hyde Park, Vermont on it? You know, chartered 17896 or whatever it is. Or is there something that I'm should. okay with just that. <laughs> well, it, it, as long as they have their choice, it, uh, that, that the hat and the vest won't exceed what we normally give them for their Christmas stipend anyway. It's their choice whether they take one or the other. Yeah, I don't know. Well, Ryder, if we want to do, so check that, see if people are okay with just doing a nice big, and, and if you don't put, your, put a bunch of other stuff on there, you could actually read Hyde Park. <laughs> Hyde Park would be large. Yeah. There's a lot of Hyde Parks around. So yeah. you'd have to have VT or Vermont somewhere. Yeah. And then whether you add a slogan or not is that a way. We haven't gotten that far, but we may not need it. Right. Or chartered is always kind of cool to have the, the yeah. 1786. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, she'll be back. 
tomorrow. She's taking a little break, so I'll talk to her tomorrow. Okay. <coughs> okay. We got anything else? Do we need to have an executive session to talk about? I have a couple little things. A couple little things. Yeah, okay. I need to go into it. Yeah. Yeah, a couple little things. Yeah. This is a. I've been waiting for this uh -oh. is the updated personnel policy, oh, so we can okay. Well, review that at your leisure. Um, let me know when you want to put it on the agenda. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> oh, no. no, that was that was the first. That was the first cut because it, it can go through it pretty quickly and see where the changes are. And then if you can't read it, I can print out a full size. Yeah, I was going to say if you could, if you could well, possibly spare another piece of paper. Do you want it online too? You can get a digital yeah. copy. Please. I, I can send that out. <laughs> okay. So when you're, when you're ready. Um, well, that's all right. Age upside down. No. No, you got to flip it up. Yeah. You flip it upside down. No. Uh, okay. I get bigger copies. Okay. I got it. <laughs> okay, we're good. I can't read that without having to give a hard time. Right. So, okay. Just put it in my box. <laughs> Kim dropped off a, and I guess this is something the select board should have been doing every year, the town should have been doing every year. The state statute gives you an option to collect up to 3% of the education tax is a penalty for people that miss their homestead filing, which has to be done every year now with your taxes. So she prepared a little policy because you have to make this decision. And okay, wait, because they do that they miss their homestead filing. Yeah. Don't the state do that? Doesn't the state? No, the state no, gave the towns the right to do it. We have to make the corrections in the tax bill, so that it's a penalty for the extra work. But you can read that first. I mean, I'll summarize it for the camera. But uh, oh, if you file if you file after the the deadline, the deadline, yes, annually on or before the due date, each homestead owner shall declare his homestead. The tax commissioner shall provide a homes a list of homesteads to each town. Uh, if there's a late filing, the tax commissioner notifies the town after April 15th, up to a three percent penalty. For Hyde Park, if you fail to file your declaration by October 15th, your property will be classified as non-homestead. So in, in Hyde Park, that means an increased tax rate, which you can't get out of by then. So you have basically from April 15th to October 15th to fix the problem if you miss the first one, if you miss filing on time. Well, then the penalty is assessed and collected by the town. So my tax guy <laughs> No, they had to do this year. So people had the, this for the prebate. That's not. Yeah. This is just to clip. Well, it's it's part. It's all tied together. But this is the filing that you have to submit every year. Check box of commercial or residential, basically. That you, they send to the the, the, the homeowner. Yeah, it used to be you, you. It used to be reversed, where they would keep you the same, and you had to tell them to change. Now they have you file it every year. You have to file it in the April fifteenth with your taxes. So this is people doesn't. So it must be, oh, it must be I get it done with my tax. This is everybody that wants the homestead rate has to tell the state to charge them the homestead rate. You have to tell them that. If, they, if you don't tell them, they charge you the commercial rate, which is the non tax rate. Okay, so it must be Dave takes care of that for me. So this just deals with the penalty for missing it. And the town has a choice of zero to three. So, it's three page. so there's a three page. Right now it's 3%, yeah. and the town has been doing the 3% for four or five years, I guess. <clears throat> what interesting this in in talking to everybody upstairs is the number of people that are eligible for a homestead exemption mm -hmm. who don't file taxes, so they don't file a homestead exemption, and they'd be eligible for the reduced rate. Not just for the reduced rate, they would be eligible for a rebate, and they don't file because it's like, well, I don't, I don't file income tax because you know they're they're so low income, wow. <clears throat> and and they said those can be the a number of the people who are struggling to pay their taxes, yeah. and they try to get them to say, you know, if you if you would fill out this form and send it in, you'd probably be able to pay your property taxes, 
That doesn't, I mean, everybody has a retirement, pay taxes, like, that. like a 401, I mean, puts it back to the older people. No, I can understand that. But. Uh, what it, it is it? Because you, because that was all tax deferred, so you have to report that every year. Mm -hmm. So, there must be still quite a few old people. There are more and more of us. <laughs> well, no, I just, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, I mean, no, I just said it was. I mean, I have to, I have to, because about. of uh, the 401. Right. I have to report my taxes. Don't do me any good, but I always end up paying. Keep trying. Any, That's I always right. end up paying anyways. Yeah, we appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, does she want us to act on this now, or we get to, can we put this with well, our other policy and just do it? It's a, a continuation of the existing policy that was signed in 2011. Okay. So. Yep, there it is. It's not, it's, unless you want to Nothing revisit different. it and charge less or zero, it's, it would be work that we do to send out the amended tax bill for free if you don't charge right. something on the. We'll keep doing the same thing? Yep. Yep, looks like we're going to do the same thing. Yep, so that would be a motion we to adopt. We need a motion to adopt the policy or to extend the existing, penalty. right? Yep. So we'll second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody Let's opposed? Any, any column, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Left or right, doesn't matter. <laughs> this one. <laughs> I need to sign this. I think that has, I don't, does that have a well, signature? She well, she's, 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 she's got a permit. No, I don't think so. Chief is the one that sort of does it. But yeah, but I assume that must be the left. Yeah, well, that she just attached a sign here, but Ed signed it. This is a copy of it. Yeah. Gave you a No, no, yeah, yeah. No, she no, had no, it. no. I have it, and it's that, but that she's she got yeah. no, a sticky the, thing on it. <laughs> no, well, a... if she needs it, she'll call me. <clears throat> okay. Anything else? Uh, let's see. We want to talk about Pocket Park with Brian for one second. Okay. We're supposed to have a groundbreaking thing with the Department of Health, so I'm trying to set that up so they can come and look at the whatever status it is they want to come in before there was a grand opening at the end. At this point, the plants may be in just before frost or maybe a spring thing, but the plants are not your deal. We're going to have the, the tree warden and improvement association help with that whole final step. But right now, it does a good job. Ooh. Yeah. So if you're, if you're on Main Street, you'll see a big hole for yeah. the, yeah, we for the that. octagon, and you'll see yeah. a ripped up walkway to the memorial. And met with uh, the community circle folks today, and we walked through the slightly redesigned home day because we're still going to be there for home day on right. Saturday. Right. But we'll have to probably on Friday or something just tune up the area, maybe do whatever we can to tighten that up, and then protect the area from kids stumbling in there. Anything else you want to add to that? No, it's, just, it's going to be a slow process because right now the courts aren't sending me uh, very many uh, people to uh, be on the work group. But uh, I met with uh, the new judge and she's uh, uh, indicated that she likes the work group program right, and good. the work that we do. And <clears throat> she used it quite a bit. I guess she was in Burlington prior. And so now she's... Uh, um, interested in trying to get her numbers back up. It's a sentencing option and she likes to use it. So, mm -hmm. so, so uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed. It may take us a, a couple of weeks to see that change. But uh, I plan on being there if uh, I've got one person scheduled for tomorrow. But at least we can start getting it laid out and get the popular forms. We purchased some um, stakes 
to support the forms with uh, you know, Ron and I talked about that and I purchased them and we've done the parking miles. So we're good there. Um, I'll get the wood for the forms tomorrow as well. We'll get that over there and start uh, laying that out. There. So I've uh, talked with Dave about uh, purchasing the concrete, I guess. It's the uh, same deal for either uh, SD Ireland or uh, with uh, Harrison. And Harrison is uh, uh, out of Pike Park here, so it's probably good to do business with them. And, uh, He's a taxpayer in Pike Park. Yeah, so, so, um, yeah uh, we'll see how it goes. And, uh, so, Julian, now and tomorrow. Now we're on <laughs> Thursday, right? <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it depends on how many people I have and that sort of thing. We got to be here at 3 o'clock Thursday, you know? So, uh, um, is that right yeah. that no, any, any this is a different Thursday. Oh, that's October, not no, Thursday. October 3rd. October 3rd yeah. fire. Oh, it's still in September. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, still September. Can you help? It hasn't Thursday been that long a meeting. Huh? Can you help Thursday? I think so. What's yeah. Thursday? Okay. I'll talk to somebody. Are you already volunteered? Didn't, they? didn't I hear that last meeting? Yeah, you did. I, I heard something. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Every day is a different day. <laughs> hey, I just don't get a day yet, but we'll see. <laughs> I'll get a replacement for me. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what I do. I'll come in out Thursday. I have a hat that says boss. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll probably set up something uh, what time? on Wednesday. What time Thursday? Wednesday or Thursday for a photo op. Uh, uh, Wednesday party. I gotta go to Burlington. But Thursday you, somebody will be around it sounds yeah. like. So. What? I just, we like to wake up first thing in the morning at 10.30 route. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 8.30. 8.30? Yeah. 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 So, Let me write it down. I'll see if the Department of Health wants to come by who's the grant funding agency yeah. on Thursday morning to be around Thursday. for whatever we're doing yeah. on Thursday. 8.30. Okay. Where we need the court hills? Okay. I want the guys on the chair talk. I said, we're getting transits, that stuff. I said, don't need that. I said, all oh, we need is a golf ball. We're going to roll off the level. Oh, the front of the court hills? Yeah. Getting that properly done. Okay. So we're done. So we're going to go into executive session? Yeah. Okay. You so want to everybody bring your pick up and we'll load the benches on the fire at the same time? <laughs> all right. <laughs>